Sports Homecoming 1990 in Tallahassee as Florida A&M celebrates its homecoming. 25 high school bands participating from as far away as Atlanta, Birmingham, Miami, and Charleston, South Carolina. And inside Bragg Stadium, a capacity crowd expected for this 31st meeting as the Bulldogs of South Carolina State come in to take on the Rattlers of Florida A&M. Hello again, everyone. I'm Charlie Neal, along with Doug Williams and Lim Barney. Glad you could be with us for this... for the technical difficulties. Uh, those of you who are listening to me by way of phone line, we lost the pictures, but we had a little audio for a moment. 8.37 is the time remaining. And it's a 3-0 South Carolina State ball game. Of course, Terry Mickens coming up with a big reception on this drive to give a first down to the Rattlers of Florida A&M. And then now they're faced with a third and five with the ball at the 27-yard line of South Carolina State. They're moving it through the air. Ezell wants to go to the air under pressure, throws incomplete. I believe he was trying to hit George Wynn, the tight end. There's a flag down. Let's see what the flag is about. Larry Hills, our referee. It looks like it's going to be against the Rattlers of Florida A&M. Hold him. There's the score. Three to nothing in the first quarter. I'll tell you who's playing a good game so far on defense for South Carolina State is Robert Reeves, a defensive tackle, number 89. Holding. Offense. Penalties declined. Fourth down. That's my man, huh, Tyler? Yep, that's your man. That's the one that told me his mother got on me. How about Ricky Hill with his seventh oh, interception? He's one more interception to our school record. They just threw it to him. First pass, he's there through. He's now, Vertuno in to try to tie this game. It'll be a 45-yard field goal attempt. His longest this year is 37. He's ranked third in the NBAC in scoring with 36 points. Needs 11 to become the school's career scoring leader. The kick is up. It is long enough. Is it good? No. Off to the left. So, Jimmy Fortuno misses on a 45-yard field goal attempt. Timeout, 8.27 remaining. First quarter, 3-0, South Carolina State. For 500 destinations nationwide for you to choose from. And by Pizza Hut, home of Pan Pizza, that's winning the hearts of America. Pizza Hut, making it great. William Wright, number 45. Mr. ESPN has been happily named for missing three in a game against Grambling, and uh, he comes through with a big one that time from 20, 37, 27 yards out, his third field goal of the year. Let's look at South Carolina State's offense. They're led by Ronald York. The quarterback, I talked about him. This is only his second game, starting his third game playing. And his offensive line, it averages 267 up front. He's back to pass on first down, throws in the middle, intercepted! <laughs> Out of bounds on the interception. You know, the thing about the interception is kind of ironic. His Both first pass, back throwing their first, first pass, pass is interception. <laughs> and that's Jacob Turnipseed. He's got a lot of pressure on him. He just turned around. He really didn't have a chance to spot his defense, his receiver. And Turnipseed comes up with a fine turnover in good field position, almost where they tried to punt the, uh, kick the field goal from. Here it is again. Let me make it think, sound like that fine turnover was for him. <laughs> <laughs> and for Turnipseed on the return, that's his first interception of the year. The eighth for the team, and Florida a &M sitting pretty. At the 25-yard line, and an out pattern overthrown on the far side. They were trying to get it to James Thurman, the sophomore out of Bartow, Florida. 13 receptions for him coming into the game. Ironic as it may sound, Charlie, both quarterbacks throwing their first pass were intercepted today. It certainly works. There's Ezell, the quarterback, red shirt freshman. We talked about him out of McGool Tulin. Had a dream game a week ago. Five touchdowns. 478 uh, yards. Is his offensive line. Back to pass. Sacked. 
He was not sacked a week ago. But he is sacked today, and he has been intercepted. And that's Reeves again. And Charlie, you know that offensive line was featured this morning in the newspaper. They certainly were. And they were called the bricks in the wall. <laughs> they had given up only six sacks this year, and they've given up a sack so far today. Well, watch the tremendous amount of pressure that number 92, Gilbert Thurman, applies here to flush him back up in the pocket where he had help from his friends coming in to converge. It'll be third and about 15. The ball at the 30-yard line. Ezell calls a timeout. He doesn't like what he sees up front. That think, South Carolina State defense, though, I'll tell you, they've done the job. They have returned two interceptions for touchdowns this year. The defensive backs coming into today's game had 13 of the 14 interceptions for the team, 14 of 15 right now. And it's a 3-0 lead for South Carolina State. 7-13, the time remaining, first quarter. Florida A&M Rattlers take on the Morgan State Bears October 28th, 7 p.m. in the Orange Bowl. The Rattlers are here to do it again in the most renowned annual football game this year. See the action. Feel the excitement as the International Fame FAMU Marching 100 take to the field to strut their stuff during halftime. Be there October 28th as the FAMU Rattlers shake up the Orange Bowl. Ezell, Offensive Player of the Week in the Mideastern Athletic Conference. This is what his record, as far as career is concerned, he is tied for completions in a career, 240 with the completion so far. He needs two to tie the touchdown passing record in a career. And he's just a junior. He's got another year. He has another completion. This one to Rasul. Rasul on his feet. Dies for the first down. At the 15-yard line, that's good second effort. That's when you want it. That's when you're hungry and you got to get it. Well, he's got to want it. I know the first two times he attempted to carry the ball, he lost yardage today. Rasul is now getting back uh, pretty much level uh, statistically-wise. Uh, he made a nice and catch out of the backfield to gain a first down to keep the drive alive. Ball you see is that? spotted at the 15. You see that graphic there, 241st completion, breaks a career record that was set by Nate Kuntz from 79 to 82. And like and I said, he's still just still have junior. another year <laughs> and some more games this That's year. That's right. <laughs> he may break a number, number of records in this game. Back to pass on first down. Ezell under pressure. He is sacked. The third time today he has been sacked. Carlton Jinx, the junior, with five sacks coming in, picks up his six. Fumble, fumble. And they say he fumbled the ball, and South Carolina State has it. On the sack, he took it out of his arms. Relentless pass rush here. It's third of the day. Here he is, Carlton Jinks coming from the left side. There the ball is clearly out. You're right, the ball is out. Clearly out. Just a good up upfield pass rush. He beat his man, scraped the corner, put the sack on Ezell, and recovered the fumble. Outstanding well, play by Carlton Jinks. Now, I'm not sure. What are they saying? He might have reversed it. Maybe they're saying he was down. I believe the official is saying it's second down. I don't believe it is a fumble. You're right. It's not a fumble. They said that the ground caused the fumble. He was down. Okay. I, I buy it. I'm a quarterback. <laughs> so instead of a fumble, it's a sack for Carlton Jenks. As you look at Larry Hill and his crew, out of the MEAC, the umpire is James Duke. Thomas Beard, the head linesman. Larry Upson, the line judge. Robert Murray, the back judge. And Jeff Leap is the field judge. You know, I, I, th I think he has to be more aware in that pocket. Anytime a guy comes from your right side and you right hand, you're supposed to see that guy. And at least make some kind of move to avoid it. Second and 17. Peripheral vision not working that good today. They hand off to Rasul, but he doesn't get much. Rasul is just about minus yard and back to even. His first two attempts again, as I mentioned. That was not Rasul. I'm sorry. That was Pat Reddick, the pullback who got to carry. Reggie Kennedy, the man we talked about <laughs> earlier. Yeah. That's my man. I hope he don't get on me for that. A senior out of uh, Gable, South Carolina. Second team all-conference a year ago. I think he'd like to be uh, known as Baby as kid. Especially referring to his ability to play football. Yes, yes. He's held back to pass, quick drop, incomplete. 
intended it in the middle for handsome Harry Brown. Downtown Harry Brown. <laughs> when you throw that slant, you got to be able to get that ball down. I mean, most receivers don't like to go across the middle with his arms up in the air. They call those kind of balls. Hustle ball. Hustle ball. Hustle ball. You, you lose a lot of friends like that. <laughs> so to bring up a fourth down, and Fortuno, who missed on a 45-yard field goal attempt earlier, will kick this one from 38 yards. Ezell, the holder. He is six of nine in the field goal department this year. This one is long enough, and this one is good. And we have a tie ball game. So, Fortuno puts it through, and we have a 3-3 game with 5.40 remaining in the first quarter. There's Jimmy Vertuno. You know, he's had quite a career coming in from field goals, 34 of 45, 75%. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back. We're in Tallahassee. It's homecoming, 1991, for the Rattlers of Florida a &M, and they just tied it. Here we are, back in Florida A&M, 1991, homecoming. Oh <laughs> Reed, Reed the promise of a beautiful evening takes on a new dimension, especially when you have the imperial advantage in style on a grand scale. Or the Fifth Avenue's engineering and technology, making the anti-lock brake system available. Or the LeBaron sedan, loaded with features that will surprise you. And all American-made Chrysler cars have driver's side airbags as standard equipment. So you see, style is never an option. Consider it an advantage. Advantage Chrysler. That is... Ben, ben Blacknall, the defensive coordinator, going over things. Lumpkin. Along with Carl Davis, the deep man. Here's Lumpkin at the 12-yard line. Up the middle of the field goes Lumpkin. Lumpkin still on his feet, drug down at the 46-47 yard line. A good return of 35 yards for Carl Lumpkin. And you credit get to that special team block, and if you notice in the middle of that, they cross blocking through the defensive guys off balance. They know who's gonna block them. Made them slow down a little. Time to turn. I tell people all the time, football is a three-phase operation. Offense, defense, and special teams. And here's the special team doing its part to try and win this ball game. Outstanding run. Kickoff return by Mr. Lumpkin. Schuler, the tight end, comes to the near side. Hand off to the second back. That's Brown. Brown into the open field. First down. Cuts back at the 40. And down to the 30-yard line goes downtown John Brown. Speedo, Speedo. You know, we talked about him earlier. John Brown, 187 yards a year ago against Florida A&M. A big long run that time as you look at the last scoring drive that put Florida A&M on the board. A 22-yard run by John Brown out of Pershing High in Detroit. You think? Came into the game with 370 yards. Didn't even practice this week because of a stomach virus, but they're showing he's all right today. You think he'd like to play against Florida A&M? I think so. <laughs> Trying to get outside now, but nothing doing. He finally goes down. He thought that was the better part of Valor right that time as Turnip Seed had it red all the way. He did, he did the correct thing and not trying to get any more out of it than he did. You know, he his momentum was stopped. Hey, go down, especially when you see all the rallies coming at you. Right Lost now. three yards, second and 13. As they break the huddle, Jeffrey Mack will come to the near side. Tight end Schuler is on the near side. He calls the defenses for the line. Back to pass is York. Incomplete. A little bumping going on down there, but nothing called as Quincy Miller was the intended receiver. Antoine Bennett, one of the defenders down there. There was some little, a little contact going on, but I like what the official did because this, this is a contact game. It wasn't obvious. Both guys were going for the football, so why call in the field? 419 left first quarter. Third down 13 for South Carolina State. 
Again, they bring Jeffrey Mack to the near side. Benton, Belton rather, and Brown behind the quarterback. Back to pass is York. Stands in there, has time, throws, intercepted. Florida a &M. Out of bounds, William Carroll. And a flag is down. Maybe a clip. Sophomore out of Mobile, Alabama's McGill, McGill Tulin High. Came into the game with two interceptions. That is his third. Get a chance to see it again. He sort of forces it, I think, Doug. But he's looking all the way. He knew where he was going. The defensive back knew where he was going. Read his eyes. He got two two defenders on the intended receiver. Fine interception by Bill Carroll. Watch here. He, he never looked anywhere else but to that one receiver. And telegraphed guy. his pass. Fine safety play here. You know, Florida and m lost two of their four defensive starting secondary from a year ago, and William Carroll, along with J.C. Rainey, one of the two returning defenders. As far as the linebackers are concerned, they lost three of their four. Chris Blue, the only one back from the linebacking spot, and the line, Irvin Clark, the only one back. So they lost seven of 11 starters from a year ago. The reason for a poor start on defense, but they're playing good defense so far today. They certainly are. They're defense need to play together as a unit and get some continuity. And they keep the ball with, I believe that's Stacy LeMay on the carry. LeMay had been injured, knee, and Reddick had taken his place, and LeMay kind of had lost his job, but Coach Rock let him see some action today, and he said he was going to make the most of it. You wouldn't know he was coming off a knee the way he kept his legs pumping in. Nine yards on the carry to bring up a second down and one. On the ground, first down, and again, LeMay on the carry. LeMay will pick it up the first down for the Rappers. Doug, by the way, uh, is it, is it uh, prop and fitting for you and I to bet a hot dog and a Coca-Cola on today's game? We were in Jackson State? <laughs> Come on, Liam, I was hoping you wouldn't bring it up after last week from Mississippi Valley. <laughs> and Jackson swamping Southern oh, the way yeah. they did. I was hoping you wouldn't even bring it up. But well, I bet a Coke or something like Coke that. and a hot dog. Okay, you got okay, it. Okay, Coke and a hot dog. First and ten. That's All the 29-yard line. He's held with room to run. He does. Still on his feet and down at the 46-yard line of South Carolina State. Ezell. Ezell got the heart of a line. He, he just didn't want to get out of bounds. He wanted more. 28 yards on the carry. Valiant run here by Tony Ezell. He looks downfield. He's flushed out of the pocket by the rushing lineman. And he's forced to run because there's good coverage. But he picks up valuable blocking downfield did you from see his how, wide receiver. Did you see how he accelerated through that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's a good athlete. He turned on the afterburners there. Back to give it off to Stacy LeMay, who cuts it back inside. And LeMay inside the 45 to the 44-yard line. Wilson on the stop. Of course, Ken Riley very happy with his quarterback. They have two excellent wide receivers with great speed, but their quarterback, um, we played against him when I was up at Howard. We played down here two years ago on FAMU's homecoming. And Ezell was, um, I think he was a freshman or a sophomore. I've been trying to figure it up that he's played four years already, but he hasn't. But he's an outstanding football player. Well, you talk about Ezell, and Rasul goes 44 yards. Great run. And that coach's quote by Willie Jeffries uh, kind of inappropriate at the time. He's talking about Ezell and Rasul Bank. You know, every every all year everybody's been keying on Rasul and Ezell has been burning him. But here's Rasul gutting through a defense that's ranked number one in the nation 
against uh, in total defense. That coach's quote, by the way, brought to you by Amtrak with over 500 destinations nationwide for you to choose from. And the man who's shaken up is Vernon, Vernon Greer, the junior out of Charlotte, North Carolina. But Amir Rasul with his sixth rushing touchdown of the year and 44 yards on that one. An electrifying run, Charlie. He penetrates the line of scrimmage here. Now it's nothing but raw speed and a lot of athletic ability. 44-yard run by Amir Rasul. Remember, every score in this game has been set up by a turnover. <laughs> Carroll with that <laughs> interception set that one up. Of course, Turnip Seed set up Bertuno's field goal, and yeah, Hill set up Wrighton's field goal. So it is now 9-3 to three in favor of Florida and m with a minute and 50 remaining in the first quarter. So would you say with the giveaway takeover ratio that both teams offensively have been opportunistic? Well, you know, you talk about the turnovers in the game. Uh, Florida and m coming into the game had turned the ball over nine times, six through interceptions, three on fumbles. They were plus three in the giveaway takeaway ratio. South Carolina State came in. They had fumbled the ball 14 times and lost seven, were intercepted nine times for a total of 16 turnovers to their opponents 18, and they were plus two in the giveaway takeaway ratio. Again, that run. Did you see a mere look? Light MC Hammer? Yeah, it took his helmet off first so everybody can see him. <laughs> he said, please don't hurt him. Bertuno on for the point after. He's only missed one this year, and that was a week ago. He's got a field goal in the game for three points, and an extra point here would give him four, and that would make him seven to become the all-time, he would need seven to become the all-time scoring leader in the school's history. Has a career 92% from PATs, 93 of 101, 94 of 102. And it's a 10 to 3 lead. South Carolina State is trailing. FAMU started at their own 14-yard line, and... 86 yards on that drive. We'll be back. Again, scoring most of its points in the second half, as has South Carolina State. Florida and M has given up most of its points in the second half, while South Carolina State has given up most of its points in the first half, and more importantly, in the first quarter, as Rituno kicks off. Lumpkin at the 12. Oh, has some room. Needs a block. Lumpkin, 10, 5, touchdown. No flag. 78 yards on the return. Oh, what a turn around. <laughs> I tell you what, Charlie, he used his block as good as anybody I've ever seen in my life. I tell you what, here's what made that play. When he bobbled the ball, the kicking team, the, the kick kick cover team, they broke down. A big eight gaping hole here on the right side opened up, and now it's off to the races. Watch him use his block He picked here. up valuable blocking years, you mentioned, Doug. He set him up. Fortuna's not going to tackle anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Kickers normally don't. And here he is just setting up a block again, a good shield, and he escorts it into the end zone for a 78-yard kickoff return touchdown. Make it 88. 88 yards. On the 12-yard line. And as you said... <laughs> It was a great return by Carl Lumpkin. Orion Lumpkin, the sophomore out of Gainesville, Florida. So he's a hometown boy, I'll tell you. And Carl Davis, the man that escorted him all the way down the field, number seven. <laughs> that's Here two. it is again. That, 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 ball probably, that probably helped him score. That did, right there. The kicking team, they broke down once they saw him bobble the ball. A gaping hole here. The men up front continue to carry out their blocking assignment. A gaping hole large enough for a Tyrex, a Tyrex Titan to get through. And now he's escorted into the end zone for an 88-yard kickoff return. Bruce so, Jones also down there to help him out. The tight end, number 86. South Carolina, Conway, South Carolina. Here's Mr. Lumpkin. Two kickoff returns. He's over 100 yards That's already. Right. He certainly is. Special teams again. And right in for the point after. This comes with a minute 35 remaining in the first quarter. 
So 15 seconds it took him to run that 88 yards. <laughs> right to try to tie it. The kick is up, a flag is down. It is good. Now let's see what the flag is about. It's offsides against Florida and M. Of course, they'll uh, they'll take that. They'll probably will decline the penalty or maybe accept it on the ensuing kickoff. They're going to take it on the ensuing kickoff. Larry Hill. Offsides. Bam, you. The five yards will be enforced on the kickoff. So a minute and 35 remaining, and we've got a ball game. You know, last week it was a 43-38 ball game with Florida and M out dueling Delaware State. And like I said, they play very good offense. They can put points on the board. But remember one of the coaches' quotes from uh, our keys to Kent Riley was special teams play. No question about that. That win to either lose the game for you. The kicking game is very important in the overall uh, contributions of winning and losing. What those saying, offense sell tickets, defense wins games, kick and win championships. Yes, sir. <laughs> The 40-yard line is where South Carolina State will kick it from. Is Wrighton will kick off. Mr. ESPN, look, yeah. how look how close he's to that ball before he kicks it off. Tyrone Davis and Dave Lucas are the deep men. It'll be Davis at the 16. Davis to the 20, 30-yard line. That's where South Carolina State will go on defense. As you look at that scoring drive, one play, 88 yards, it only had, <laughs> took them 15 seconds. Of course, just prior to that, Rasul went to 45 yards after they completed a four-play, 87-yard drive and used up three minutes of the clock. We've got some fireworks here so far. First and 10 at the 30. And it's not the 4th of July. No, it isn't. <laughs> but it's homecoming, so anything may happen. You know, they don't serve up those patsies anymore. They had these good games on homecoming. Holding. Incomplete. Flag is down. In the vicinity of holding, and another flag is dropped by the referee. To Harry Brown. I wonder what that second flag is. Referee dropped the second one. You'll let us know right here. against, South, against Carolina South Carolina State. State. One is a holding against South Carolina State. Personal and foul. he called personal foul roughing the passer against South Carolina State. Coach <laughs> Willie Jeffries, he's not happy with the call. 18th year as a head coach. Four-time MEAC Coach of the Year. And as the seventh year as head man at South Carolina State. It's been time at Howard and Wichita State. Holding South Carolina State. The penalty is declined. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. South Carolina State. The penalty accepted. Automatic first down. Coach Willie Jeffries, a great guy, terrific guy. He's a cap also. By speaking of cappers, I'd like to say hello to noobs all over the world, especially the noobs down here at Alpha Z. Well, I thought you one, were. And the one back in Detroit. Say hello to Duncan Rock. There's the penalty situation in the game so far. Been pretty penalty free for exception of obvious type of calls. Florida and M an average seven penalties a game coming in. So had South Carolina State. Ezel hands off the right side. LeMay. This is LeMay again on the carry. LeMay picks up about three. It'll be second down and seven. Well, they make it two. It'll be second and eight. They mark the ball right at the 47-yard line. The Florida and the athletic department makes their outstanding statewide support for the Florida Athletic Strides in 1990 91 sponsor. This includes Alamo Hall, Gary Farmers Incorporated, Florida Department of Citrus, State Farmers. Ezell back to pass, throws complete, short of a first down though. But he has it complete over the middle, and the man on the reception is James Thurman, sophomore out of Bartow, Florida. I like what Ezell did then. Uh, he was upon a tremendous rush, and he got rid of the ball as soon as he possibly can with all those crossing routes coming underneath. 
It was a blitz. It was a hot pattern as well. And 10 heat. Drops it off to the safety valve. Coming up by a yard shy of the first down mark. And make it third and one. And that's the end of the first quarter. And we come back here at Bragg Stadium for this homecoming matchup. South Carolina State and Florida a &M. The Rattlers will be faced with a third and one. We'll take a timeout. It's all tied at 10 apiece. Or beechwood age for that clean, crisp taste. This bud's for you. And by Kentucky Fried Chicken. Nobody's cooking like today's KFC. Neil Doug Williams, Lim Barney here. And there's Ken Riley, a fifth year as head coach of the Rattlers of Florida AM. 26 21 and 2 record. And I think he paid Doug the ultimate compliment yesterday. He said, you're the one person that I have not, never was able to intercept when I was playing in the NFL. He has a thing on his wall of everybody he's intercepted, every quarterback, and Doug Williams' name is not up there. <laughs> I'm trying not to make friends with him. <laughs> Florida a &M keeps the ball on the ground on third and one, and it's going to be close. We'll see what they come up with as uh, the carry was by Pat Reddick. Fans standing on the east side sideline. Let's see how Fans close they are. They may the have to measure for this one, line. and they will. They have to move. You know, it's kind of ironic. We talk about the offensive line as you look at the rushing yards. Florida a &M with 87 to 38 for South Carolina State. And there's the passing yard. Florida a &M 49 to none for South Carolina State. We talked about the consistency in the offensive line. The fact that they only lost two starters from the offensive team a year ago. One was Leron Strong, an offensive lineman, and then the tight end Troy Allen. So they've had consistency there. And you see how close they are? A pick skin. <laughs> Uh, the thing is, they've had four different offensive line coaches in the last five years, but yet the consistency, Conway Heyman basically instilled the type of system, installed the type of system they're using now, and the young man who's the coach now, Jerry Ripley, uh, has continued that. I think what it shows you is that Coach Riley has, has put together a program here that no matter who comes in to do the coaching, uh, the philosophy is going to do the same. Fourth and inches. Look for a quarterback keeper? Yes. Right now. Ezel, the quarterback. Junior out of Mobile. He has a touchdown rushing this year, and he's had a good long run in this game. Fourth and inches. He keeps it, gets the first down easily inside the 45 to the 44. So they go for it on first down, and they convert. Good blocking, good surge there by the offensive line. Rooting underneath the defensive line. I tell you, when you talk about these guys on the offense, you talk about a kid named Wally Williams, who's just a sophomore, who was just fantastic as a freshman, freshman a year ago at center, doing a great job. Again, Reddick trying to bounce outside, and it stopped at about the 41-yard line. Good run defense there by South Carolina State on the right side. Right at the point of attack, they outman the offense. As a result, it's about a one-yard game. When you talk about their front line, you know, they have three seniors, a junior and a sophomore up front. The seniors are Terry Buford, Robert Frost, and Marcus Bates. Nick Morales is the junior who was a center a year ago and who kind of alternates with Eric Smallwood at that guard. They have some good backup people, Kwame Kilpatrick and the like. Good Ezell here. throws incomplete. Two men in the same vicinity, and it uh, falls harmlessly to the ground. I tell you what, that offensive line did a great job of blocking them. Just like Lim said, guys got up, and they cut them down, and just stomped on them. To Harry Brown. Coach Jeff. He says they're holding in there. He wants a flag. <laughs> they want every edge, don't they? I guess when you're a defensive coach like Coach Jeffrey, you know you're off the defensive line. Put some pressure on the quarterback. He's supposed to get back there. <laughs> it is third down. Eight yards to go. Ezell back to pass once again. In trouble. 
Nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. Off the reason of Van Dulles. <laughs> and the sack. Is Sean Phillips, the senior out of Parksville, South, Carol South Carolina, and it'll bring up a fourth down punting situation. And for the first time today, we'll see Craig Hall, who's second-ranked punter in the MEAC, averaging 37.6 yards per punt. They're allowing their opponents about 18 and a half yards, though, per punt return. Carl Davis and Lumpkin, who has a kickoff return for a touchdown, is back. Orion Lumpkin. Fair catch, call for. And that should be a penalty because the... Well, it bounced off of Florida and m player's head. Rodney Mitchell. But what happened was they did not give him the two yards to make the catch. So that's what it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, it did give him enough room to make the catch. Might have been a late foul catch sticking there also. No, I don't think so. You don't think so, no. Tom? Okay. We still have to give the man two yards. Five yard rule. Yeah, I think it's five yards. You're right. There it See, is. there's a fair catch signal. Oh, oh it was clear. Yeah. Kick catching interference. Florida A&M, 15 yard penalty. It'll be first and ten. Florida A&M's ball. Rodney Mitchell got the ball in the noggin. South Carolina State's ball. South Carolina State will have the ball first down and ten. Kick catching interference is called against the Rattlers. And they'll mark it. At the 32-yard line. Well, that's where South Carolina State will go to work first down and 10. What's happening in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference? Well, it's a two-way tie for the lead between Howard and Florida A&M. Of course, Florida A&M in this game against South Carolina State. And Howard's rooting for South Carolina State today. And, of course, they have to beat A&T for their homecoming. Here's York. Hit and spins to the 36-yard line. He's yet to play that option uh, to perfection. Three-yard gain, second and seven. He's just not a, a smooth running option quarterback to me. Well, you know, uh, he's had bruised ribs this week. Uh, he suffered in practice on Wednesday. He's not a good offense for bruised ribs. <laughs> he's going to get bruised ribs again today. He's yeah. running option to that. Quite a baseball player. Signed, uh, not signed, but offered a contract by the Minnesota Twins. He's a pitcher, but he says he loves football. A lot of people told him he was crazy not to accept the baseball contract. Whoa! Ooh. Ooh. Talk about Hawkeye. Ooh! Big number 97 on the stop defensively. Uh, Wayne, Wayne Key. Key, the sophomore, with his third tackle of the day. He's out of Palm Bay, Florida. Here it is. Boom. Uh, that hurts. Well, you know you've been hit when your feet go front. Yes, sir. <laughs> that's true. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's a load. Third down, South Carolina State. Back to pass is York. Has he completed one yet? And he does. First one. And a first down at midfield to Todd Houston, his eighth reception of the year. Redshirt sophomore out of Somerville, South Carolina. They had to get him out of that pocket in order for him to complete his first pass. They made him roll out. Well, that's better from the last time we saw South Carolina State <laughs> versus Howard. What was yeah. the third quarter before the kid completed his first pass? That was Robert Hemby. But, you know, we forgot to mention uh, how a car, the, the second half, went in the same ski. Almost. Zero for nine. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all for John Brown. Running behind Kenneth Pate, Dendy, Richard Roundtree, Calvin Colson, and Eric Funderburk. Offensive line averaging 267 pounds. Kermit Blunt, the offensive coordinator for South Carolina State, wants to say hi to his mom back in Richmond, Virginia. And of course, he says, I better say hello to my wife. Yeah, I, heard, I, heard he, first. I heard he threatened you. So. <laughs> Speaking of Richmond, that's what we'll be next week, isn't That's it? right. Goal Bowl. Yes. John Brown tripped up in the backfield again Wayne by Key. Key. And back to the line of scrimmage is all. Maybe a half-yard loss by Brown, and it's third and 11. Good Florida and M. Florida and M ranks seventh in the conference in total defense, sixth against the run, fourth in scoring defense, and seventh in pass defense. They take Key out and bring in a linebacker. They're playing situation defense right now, which well, uh, a lot of teams are doing today. Third down and long, obvious passing situation. The sprint out is left. The quarterback throws incomplete. Had a guy open. He laid him out there. 
And that was intended for Todd Houston. It'll bring up fourth down punting situation. And that'll bring on Richard Dickerson, sophomore out of Huger, South Carolina, ranked third in the conference in punting at 34 yards per punt. Good block there. They turn him loose up front. Again, they were mowed down. Fine blocking there. Ball just over the outstretched hands. And I'll tell you, the defensive back could have been vicious the way he was laid out there. Yeah, Todd Houston still could have been laying out now. Here's Dickerson, the punter. We're in the second quarter. It's all tied at 10 apiece. Oh! Over his head. Now, let's see. Can he get it away? Great job. Left footed. He does. <laughs> Five-yard kick. About, <laughs> about seven. Seven. We'll give him seven. Seven-yard seven punt. That's a lot better what, he than did a 30 great yard loss. <laughs> he did a great job of getting rid of the ball. Timeout on the field, 9-15, still tied at 10. It'll be Florida and M's ball when we come back at their own 43. Tim's Lim Barney here with Bragg Stadium in Hi, Tallahassee, Pussy. Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Homecoming, 1990 gonna, for the Rapids We're going to find out who Booby and Poopy is a little later, Lim. <laughs> Hi, Funcia, <laughs> Jackie, Demetrius, and Hattie Belina. And Lisa. And her mother. Hope Mama Do is doing great. First and 10, Florida a &M. Ezel to Rasul. Rasul, Reggie Kennedy is there to meet him. And he loses maybe a yard. It'll be second down and 11. I want to remind our viewers, don't forget, Boxing the Night on BET coming up from Atlantic City. Tony Tubbs in action at 9 p.m. Eastern Time tonight right here on BET. Charles K. will be there along with Leland Hardy and Elmer Smith. It was a fumble right here. Nah, I, nah. I tell you what they're doing. They're going after that football. They say in yeah. the ground. No, the ball was out before you Yeah, but ground. they're not going to give them that. Second and 11. <laughs> Too close. Ezel back to pass. Plenty of time. Flag is down. Maybe holding way out of bounds. Thrown on the far sideline. It was intended on the far sideline. For Mark 19. Wilson complains he was hell. Tyrone Davis. Baby, and it is holding. My <laughs> Somebody was held in the middle of the line. I tell you what, that offensive line just get together and just keep you out of there. Lisa McGinn. Holding. Florida a and It'll be second down. Second and 21. Let's see if we can see the guilty culprit here. Look at this line. How they just stay right together there. and keep everybody out of there. Second and 21, though, after the penalty, moves the ball back to the 32-yard line. On the hold. You know, myself being a quarterback, you know, I love hey, offensive linemen. I know you do. <laughs> Protect me. Huh? I, know, I know you had to buy a, whole, a bucket load of uh, Rolex watches over your years. Not Rolex. Couldn't afford Rolex. Timex <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> something that took a lick. It's not the gift. It's appreciation it's, of the exactly. gift. Exactly. Now South Carolina State calls a timeout. Talks things over. You know, we talked about the stats on Ezell and what he has done throughout of his career. He's just a junior. And you look at the banner day he had a week ago, 23 of 38, 478 yards, five, five touchdowns, and at one point completed nine in a row. When you look back at your career as a collegian, Doug, and you remember the biggest game that you ever had, what would it be? Would you have anything like that? Believe it or not, I never had opportunity to have yards like that in college. Um, Hard you know, to believe, they, isn't it? I mean, when I was in a ball game, uh, they had to throw the ball that many times in order to win because they had to come from behind. Uh, my biggest days... I usually was on the bench about my third quarter. I didn't have a, I didn't have a chance to play. I remember one day um, played against Langston. I had opportunity to throw for seven TDs and about 300 yards, but I was out of the ball game going into the fourth quarter. They got the wave going here. <laughs> Hope everybody's had that jam with me because it's a full title wave, baby. <laughs> Florida style, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> and no fan. That's right. You want it, you got it. Ezell. They lost last year. 28-26 was the final in this game. Rasul being chased and brought down by William Weaver after the reception. 
A gain of about five. It'll be third and 15. Ezell sort of got the ball to Amir was still just a little late then. Uh, had he got it to him a little early, the dream weaver may have been trying to chase him down to the end zone. With 11 receptions coming in for Rasul, 101 yards. He has not gotten into the end zone by way of pass receiving. But it's ironic that he's talking about pass spreading the wealth around. Five players on this Florida a &M team have caught double figures as far as receptions are concerned. I can believe it the way their system look here. I mean, they got everybody going underneath, everybody helping out each other, they pick it. I mean, you don't know who's going to get the football because everybody going different directions. Weaver covering Rasul out of the backfield, incomplete, fourth down. I mentioned five players have receiving in double figures. Six players have over 100 yards in receiving. And seven players have at least one touchdown in receiving. <laughs> I mean, that's spreading the football around. And receivers like that, when you got a quarterback that you know you're going to run your route because there's a possibility you get in the football. Fourth down, Craig Hall back to punt it once again for Florida a and You're saying there's normally a primary receiver, but with this offensive formation, anybody could be primary. Anybody could be primary. That's good. Get open. Davis. And Davis takes it back to the 43. The timeout, 7.38 remaining after the 33-yard punt by Craig Hall. And it's all tied at 10 apiece. It's coming to 100 million mailboxes across the country. To every home and every business. A complete address guide from 10 South Carolina State, Willie Jeffries. They started the season with a loss to Furman, beat Presbyterian, lost to Howard. And now are on a three-game streak after wins over Johnson C. Smith, Morgan, and Bethune. First down and 10. Second back is John Brown. Not much for him. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. That play had a, uh, a stagger in it. It what, looked what good. Smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Fooling somebody. Cedric Jones, one of the men on the stop defensively. Didn't fool the defense, though. No gain on the play for South Carolina State. Brings up a second down and 10. Pitch to Brown, trying to turn the corner. Needs a block out there, but the swarming defense of the Rattlers stopping it. Chris Blue leading the way. Fine run defense, left side defensively for the Rattlers. Good force, good field, good containment. As a result, he had a help. He had a lot of help from his friends coming over as he turned it back in. John Brown barely got a yard on the play. Downtown John Brown, Speedo from Detroit. Third down and nine for the Rattlers. 6.33 remaining, first half. It's all tied at 10. All scores in this game set up, except the kickoff return by turnovers. York, he throws, has it complete. Incomplete. Todd Houston was the intended receiver. Flag is down. Houston in and out of his hands, but still would have been way shy of a first down by by eight yards. As you look at Craig Hall, junior out of Tallahassee, is Ricard High. Maybe holding against uh, South Carolina State. Fifth in the conference in interception. See, here's Houston. He has the ball, but drops it. But still, like I said, even if he'd have held on, very short. He would have been uh, long, long way. way. Holding South Carolina State. The penalty is declined. Plus Fourth down. the penalty tacked on. He would have brought it back anyhow. And uh, it'll bring up a fourth down punting situation for South Carolina State with Richard Dickerson back to do the honors. And last time he snapped it over his head. He certainly did. The man did a great job in getting it off. Left footed. And you see the deep man. That's Florida Tyrone coming Davis. with pressure also. Left-footed kicker, gets it away. Tyrone Davis chasing it, feels it at the 24. Trying to cut up. Oh! Good tackle downfield on the One special teams beat. play. Big number 98 for South Carolina State. And that is Cedric Davis, junior out of Rock Hill, South Carolina.
yard. AM works from their own 23. First and 10 is tied at 10. We had some fireworks in the first quarter. Everything slowed down a little now. Certainly yeah. has. <laughs> cool down. The, there's a shadow over the field. Here's the shirt and pole. Tuskegee on top. We'll see them Thanksgiving Day against Alabama State. We'll see Virginia Union next week. They're playing Norfolk State today for Norfolk State's homecoming down in Norfolk. A&T and Howard are matching up today up in Washington, D.C. for Howard's homecoming. And, of course, Jackson and Grambling are playing in Alabama State. 4-2-1. And, and they may have one of the better teams in the swag. They got off to a slow start. They're rolling now. First and 10 at their own 23. Not much for Rasul. He was knocked back that time. Backbender. Hey, some hard hitting out there. Carl right Jinx is one of the hard hitters. <laughs> Along with Cedric Davis. Sometimes you want to be a part of it and just want to be a part up here in the boot watching it. That's right. That's the part I like. <laughs> as close as I want to get to the action. The third level. Second down. Away from the action. Yes, sir. <laughs> they gave him one on that last <laughs> carry. But I have quite a halftime show for you. I, you can expect South Carolina State band, FAMU's band. Ezel. Nobody Back. got out in the pattern. I don't believe that. I tell you, we talked about, you know, we talked about all the receivers going underneath and everything. If you look, if we had opportunity to see the replay, the receivers got hooked up because the defensive back forced the receiver to run into each other so nobody became open. It was a bump and run up front uh, applied by the defensive people. Uh, nobody is out in the pattern. Uh, no, he wanted to throw the football, but down the field with these guys who was crossing, the defensive back jammed them, made them bump each other. Lost Good job. Of three, third and 12. Good job defensively. Obvious passing situation now. Ezel throws, has a man in the middle, has it complete for first down. And on the reception is Terry Mickens, his second reception. Sophomore out of Tallahassee, freshman rather, out of Leon High in Tallahassee, Florida. So Mickens picks up his second reception. That's good for 24 yards and a first down. Good touch here by Ezel. You can see why he's just about to become the all-time leading pass, uh, passer here in FAMU's history. Good job here. Mickens split in the middle there. Man-on-man -man coverage. They had a blitz going. Todd Logan was the man who had to try to catch him. The man shaking up on the field for South Carolina State. Of course, uh, we talked about South Carolina State's defense over the last three games in which they have won. They've outscored their opponents 85-7. to I think it's going to be interesting to, today because, you know, South Carolina is a ball control football team. That's and Florida team. like throwing the football. If they can put some points on the board, I think what's going to happen, they're going to force South Carolina to throw the ball more than usual. Maybe a shoulder. Eugene Brown, number eight, is the man who's shaken up. He was coming over the top there. And it was hard to see where the injury occurred. Maybe he caught something in the ribs or maybe a shoulder. It looked like they were holding on to that left shoulder or left arm. But he's not moving it at all. South Carolina of state marching 100 mama please speak to her somebody's watching me somewhere right <laughs> yes first down and 10 rattlers of florida and m at just shy of the 45 yard line their own 45 Ezel hands off to the near side. Rasul trying to turn the corner. Cuts it back inside. Wasn't much running room there for him as he cut it back. And Reggie Kennedy was there. Carlton Jinx was there on the stop. You see why there's another man that's down. Jinx, down. Jinx was a little You can't hold yourself there on national television, homeboy. Oh, boy. That's what Cosby said. Might he hit him in the stomach. <laughs> yeah, right. In the lower stomach. In the Jinx. lower abdomen. On the stop. A gain of one. Second down and nine. 414, the time remaining in the first half. Charlie, I appreciate you all not rub, rub, rubbing it in about Mississippi Valley and Grambling last week. There's nothing to rub in. I know. They Valley did <laughs> enough rubbing as it was. Wasn't <laughs> Valley rubbed in the right way, huh? Let's see where. Let's see. Ooh. Up under the pile. Yeah. Somebody stepped on him. Yes. But he need him in the groin. Of course, South Carolina State continues its trek. 
Next week, they will play against Delaware State while Florida a and takes on Morgan down in Miami. The Orange Blossom Classic a week from today. So Lim, Doug and, exactly is that? Lim, Doug, and I will be in Richmond for the Gold Bowl, Virginia so Union, Virginia State, State a week from Saturday. Join us there for that one. Big CIAA matchup. Taco Bell, Kalashi State Bank. We'll see what Ken Riley had to say about this particular game as I talked to him yesterday. Well, it's a big uh, game for us. The last two weeks have been a uh, conference game and very big games for us. A&T was a good football team. Delaware State is a good football team. And uh, South Carolina State coming in is another excellent football team right now. They're number one in every category defensively in our conference. So uh, it's definitely going to be a good contest uh, as far as uh, rivalry and conference game. And uh, we definitely have to be at our best in order to win this game. And the coach's quote brought to you by Amtrak. With over 500 destinations nationwide for you to choose from. And so far, the defense has been tough. Second down and nine. South Carolina State on defense. Florida and then with the ball. Ezell, play action, back to pass, rolls, throws, has a complete. LeMay. Running room over there for Stacy LeMay. A flag way downfield. Away from the play. And let's see, Vernon Greer was down there and he was covering Tim Daniel way downfield. So let's see what the flag is about. Is it offensive or defensive? Offensive holding. Defensive holding. And it's going to be Greer. against Greer. You can't see it. It's away from the play. He's throwing it to the left side. The play and the uh, disturbance occurred on the right side. On the sideline. About 60 yards away from the play. <laughs> He could have punted it that far. Why hold it? <laughs> and of course, Coach Jeffrey's down there arguing. Robert Murray is the back judge who threw the flag. Here's Larry. Holding Hill. South Carolina State. It'll be 10 yards and automatic first down. So the holding penalty moves the ball down to the 44-yard line of South Carolina State. This drive for Florida and M started at their own 23. And they're trying to run this clock out in this first half and not give South Carolina State the ball back. And the clock is down to 340. That's the kind of job that South Carolina State like to do. They like to control the ball in the clock. Rasul. And Rasul is down to about the 40-yard line. Gain of about four. Second and six. Tackle when you Certainly tackle was. here like that. That's great defense. Certainly was. Excellent defense here by Good play kid. action pass here. Fine job by Amir Rasul Diving lunging for that, for that first down marker. He has 1,670 career yards coming into the game. That's a 5.8 average. 14 touchdowns. He came in also with 50 receptions and five touchdowns by way of reception. Mickens in motion to the near side. LeMay. Right as he touched the ball, he lost yards as Reggie Kennedy. I must have been listening to the play. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie Kennedy was in the backfield. I think the offensive Bay line did. told him where he was going. He has had three tackles Reggie for Kennedy losses today. And that's a loss of a couple, about three, in fact. It'll be second and about 12, let's say. Loss of two. Second and 12. Ball back to the 36-yard line. But it's in South Carolina State territory. Plenty of ball for it all. He pushed off. He pushed off. He pushed off. He certainly did. Tim Daniel. He pushed off. That should have been offensive pass. Yes, it should have. But the official couldn't see it. I think the both of them initiated the contact. 
offensive for, interference. For Ezell, his 12th passing touchdown of the year. Let's see if we can see the push off again. A fine block here at the point of attack. Ezell just rifles it up. Right sideline takeoff. There it is. Good. I mean, hey, it's all a part of the job. They're going to put six points on the board. That's right. Contact for 77-yard <laughs> drive. 36-yard pass to Daniel for Daniel. That is his third touchdown reception of the year. The kick by Rizzuto is good. South Carolina State trailing by seven. 17 to 10 with a minute 45 remaining in the second quarter. We'll be back. Everybody, everybody, please meet your son at gate 15. Teams have split the last four meetings with each winning at home. Last year was South Carolina State winning in Orangeburg by two points, 28 to 26. Right now, Florida and M enjoying a seven-point lead, 17 to 10, with a minute 45 remaining in the first half of play. Last time Pam you scored, Lumpkin answered with an 88-yard kickoff return. Let's see if he can't replicate it. That last scoring drive they used four minutes off the clock. 36-yard pass. He's held to Daniel, and Bertino's PAT was good. Bertino's short kickoff. And Brown lets it bounce. He better get on it. And South Carolina State will start at their own 11-yard line. So there's no chance for a long kickoff return that time. Let's look at it here. Oh, how could he let it bounce in front of him like that? That's John Brown. Downtown. And it was a penalty that was refused against South Carolina State. So, Plant Fam, you will keep them deep. Personal foul, Florida AM. Personal foul, South Carolina State. Simultaneous personal fouls. The penalties offset. It'll be first and ten. So it was offsetting penalties. Nevertheless, it's at the 13-yard line is where South Carolina State will have to go to work. First down and 10 with a minute and 45 seconds. Clock never moved, did it? <laughs> he went to sleep. Clock man went to sleep. On the ground, they keep it. Go. You know, I think coming to the game, Florida and them do one thing about South Carolina State. They was going to try to control the clock, and they were going to try to run the football. And that defense is geared for the running game. Irvin Clark, the man on the stop. Along the with Wayne Key teaming up on that tackle. Out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Florida and Emmons put a new defensive scheme. They, they had two guys rushing, but as soon as he sprint out, that strong safety comes up, and nobody's there to block him. Can't match the numbers. Whoa. And there's a man, I believe it's Dexter Nottage, 72, freshman out of Hollywood Hills High in Hollywood, Florida. A little shaken up for the Rattlers of Florida and m and they're tending to him right now. He gets up, and he's going off under his own power. Let's give him a hand as he comes off. Dexter Nottage. Put some dirt on it. He'll be back in next play. <laughs> Third. And 14. <laughs> 51 seconds. The clock ticking. Left in the half. Stay with us for our halftime showtime. And our Toyota Sports Line. On the draw play, John Brown. Didn't fool anybody. To the 10-yard line. He again on the stop. He swept him up. He didn't even play last year, but we got a flag downfield. Let's see what this is about. We may have holding downfield somewhere. It may give uh, personal foul. Personal foul. It may give new life to the Bulldogs of South Carolina State with 32 seconds left. That's disqualification. Somebody's out of the ball game. Now he wants disqualification. 
Oh, oh, Je oh Jeffrey's saying that. Okay. Yeah. I thought, That's I was... disqualification. He's going to start a fight. He's been doing it all day. Press the foul. <laughs> is Jeffrey a salesman? Press the foul is an automatic first down. Because so Jefferson won him out, don't he? Is he a salesman? <laughs> He's been doing it all day, Jeff said. <laughs> Coach has been watching. I've been watching it. Nobody but him all day. <laughs> is he a salesman or what? Oh, first and 10 at the 25 yard line for South Carolina State. 22 seconds remaining. Kept the drive alive. It was unnecessary penalty. So they got to get into the end zone. And they're not going to get in there that way. I don't they know. Well, here's John Brown, first down. They need to call a timeout with 10 seconds remaining, and they do. Well, I guess the element of surprise, remember he went 85 yards on the similar type play against Howard University, and Lightning can strike twice. No never question. Say never. That's right. He's had two long runs today. JB, downtown John Brown from Detroit. Oh, no, Juanita Brown is quite happy this young man. I saw in the lobby last week she had clippings of him. He, he's made an all-star game already this year. I don't know yeah. which one it is. Yeah. Maybe the senior bowl or the blue-gray, but congratulations to just, downtown. Just make it. Run. Yes. William, William Carroll, the man who made the stop, saved the touchdown. Same high school as the quarterback Ezell out of Mobile, Alabama, McGill pulling high. South Carolina State trying to put some points on the board before halftime. They may have one, maybe two plays left. I, I would say one. I mean, the type of offense they run is not a drop-back offense. They're going to have to roll out and all to throw the football. Um, well, if it's an incomplete pass, you might have a second. It all depends on whether or not the clock may go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. Well, we'll see here. He rolls out. Looks back to the near side. Throws. Intro. Intercepted. Barney. Great play. Excellent. William Carroll with his second interception of the day. He has four for the year. With a second to go. Carroll's interception set up the school's 44-yard run. And now Carroll. The third turnover today by South Carolina State. All three coming by way of interception. Here it is again. The ball intended for Quincy Miller. York and wanted it all. I'll tell you, Carroll came over from the free safety spot and did a whale of a job. He never was fooled at all. Never. Of course, you know they're going to try and go for something deep, and he covered the center field like the morning dew. <laughs> three interceptions today by Florida a ms defense. So coming into the game... Had six interceptions, and they'll just run this one. And that's the end of the first half. As they go to the locker room, it is 17 to 10. Florida a and they're leading. It's homecoming. Stay with us. We'll be back. Halftime, Joe time, and our Toyota Sports Line right here from Tallahassee. Yeah, man, it's a 17 to 10 lead for the Rattlers of Florida A&M. Hello again, everyone. I'm Charlie Neal. would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our Showtime Halftime. And we're going to right now take a, a moment to recap some of the activity in the first half. Of course, uh, the first three scores were led by turnovers after a right and interception. Here's Amir Rasul going 44 yards on the run. It was a 3-3 ball game at this particular time. Carroll's interception set up that run by Rasul, and it's a 10-3 ball game at this particular point with Florida a &M out in front. And then here's Lumpkin. On the ensuing kickoff, Orion Lumpkin drops the ball, and that kind of throws the defense for a moment, and he goes untouched 88 yards into the end zone, and the extra point by William Wrighton was good as Carl Davis escorts him into the end zone and it was all tied at 10 apiece. But just uh, with a minute and 45 left in the half, here's Tony Ezell going upstairs and here's Tim Daniel on the receiving end. There was a little bumping downfield, but the officials uh, said, well, we're not going to worry about it too much. And uh, of course, Tim Daniel in the end zone with his third touchdown reception of the year. And so that's the way it stands at halftime, 17 to 10, with Florida A&M leading at this particular point. Well, 
you know, at halftime, you couldn't have a homecoming without having some bands perform for you. And that's what's going on right now as the South Carolina State University Marching Band is down on the field and is brought to you by Florida Citrus and the Florida Orange Growers. Florida quality orange juice that makes you feel so good. And they're called the Marching 101. That's the name originally given to the band from its early size, and it features energetic marching combining high knee lift with precision marching, choreographed movement, and pageantry. The director is Arnold Sargent, and the young ladies that dance with them are called the Champagne Dancers, the South Carolina State University Marching 101 Band.
South Carolina State Marching 101 band, and we talk about South Carolina State. I have the pleasure of having Dr. Al Smith, who's the president of South Carolina State, with me, and uh, you can't be too happy with the score right now, but the band did a good job at halftime, right? <laughs> right. Good to see you, Charlie, and okay. good to be here at BET. Let's talk a little bit about what's happening with your scholarship fund at South Carolina State and what's happening. Well, South Carolina State College is in the process of putting through for a two-year period a $2 million endowed scholarship fund. Now, this scholarship fund is for students, regardless to the academic area of interest or the extracurricular activity interest. What we're attempting to do here is to make sure that students across the state of South Carolina and across the country that would like to attend South Carolina State College will have the financial means to do so. Okay, and Harry Carson, a graduate of South Carolina State, and of course we know played many years with the New York Giants, is a very uh, uh, integral part of what's happening. Well, Harry Carson... Carson is chairman of our General Scholarship Fund, and he's doing a super job for us. He is a living testimony to what it means to have the opportunity by way of scholarship to attend college, and he happened to have attended South Carolina State College. Talking about the private sector, how do they get involved, and what are you doing about them getting involved with us? Well, when we talk about scholarship support and this $2 million campaign, we're looking to first alumni because they must be the lead. And then, of course, from there, we look to the corporate community, and we ask them to not make a contribution to South Carolina State College, but make an investment in tomorrow's leadership. That's what we're looking for. When you talk about what's happening in athletics, and I'm asked this question often, and maybe you can shed some light on the subject, do you find that maybe more and more young men and athletes are coming back to the predominantly black institutions? Well, I think that the pendulum has began to change and to swing in a different direction. I think many of the young black youngsters across the country are looking at black colleges again as a way and a means of getting that college education. Yes, there are more black students coming back to predominantly black colleges, and I think for many reasons. What do you think one of the main reasons is? Well, let me just put it this way. I think that they are finding the opportunity to participate in the broad spectrum of the educational enterprise and experience not necessarily to be available in, in every institution. They do find that to be uh, available for the most part at the predominantly black college. What I say is this, that the learning experience it takes place not only in the classroom, but also outside of the classroom. That means the opportunity to be members of organizations, and not only members, but officers and mm -hmm. organizations. Okay. We at South Carolina State College right now, we have over 105 different organizations, all with a slate of officers. Uh -huh. These young people are learning leadership, mm -hmm. and that's what it's all about. All right. Thank you, Dr. Al Smith. Such a pleasure to have you here. And, okay. And thank glad you, so you much, glad you could be with us here at halftime. You guys, keep up the good work. All right. Thank you, sir. Dr. Albert Smith, president of South Carolina State the University. Now let's get out on the field. The marching 100 of the Rattlers of Florida A&M. They're taking the field for their halftime showtime. They're under the direction of William P. Foster. He's been around a long time. The marching 100 of FAMU. And their theme today is today, tomorrow, and forever.
Marching 100, brought to you by the Florida Citrus and the Florida Orange Growers. Florida quality orange juice. It makes you feel so good. Halftime sports line is being put to you by your Toyota dealer and Toyota's quality line of 1990 cars and trucks. Toyota, a heritage of reliability. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Well, son, you put your feet in the deep water now. You leave it behind playing ball with the kids. You're playing for pay. You're stepping in the deep water. I hope you can swim. This sports trivia question has been brought to you by your Toyota dealer and their quality line of cars and trucks. 
Toyota, I love what you do for me. Becker recognized not only for their leadership on the gridiron, but their leadership in the classroom and in the community. And the player recognized today for South Carolina State is Robert Denby, a communication service uh, major. He tutors local elementary school students and is an active member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And for Florida A&M, the winner is Irvin Clark. And his community service includes being an active member of Fellowship of Christian Athletes. He works with the Navy vets and is active with the Tallahassee Urban League. And for their accomplishments, Toyota will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship for fund. Toyota, heritage of reliability. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Let's check out some scores from other games that are happening today. Of course, our game here is 17-10 with South Carolina State trailing Florida A&M. It's Florida A&M's homecoming. Of course, Hampton and Tuskegee are playing. And Hampton, this is a surprise, a 25-6 lead over Tuskegee, who was unbeaten at 7-0 coming into today's game. Elsewhere, Southern trailing Alcorn, 21-14. That is at halftime. Jackson State and Alabama State. This is uh, Grambling uh, is at home for this one, and Jackson State with a three-point lead in the second quarter. Livingstone trailing Mars Brown, 14-6. That's at halftime. At Howard University, this is Howard's homecoming, and the Aggies are spoiling it right now, leading 30-20. 12 in the fourth quarter, while Delaware State and Morgan, Delaware State shutting out Morgan 28 to nothing, and that game is in the third quarter. You know, when you talk about the World Series, you know, game four will be played tonight out in Oakland, and so far, the Nasty Boys have slam dunked the Bash Brothers. Well, they haven't done too well, as the Nasty Boys have a commanding three to nothing lead in that series. Well, our Foncia Bowman was in Cincinnati earlier this week and has a review of both teams. <laughs> Combination years of the A's and Reds last met in the World Series. And back then, the A's came out on top and managed to string together three consecutive World Series. But these players aren't thinking about what happened back in 72. What's on their minds? Well, doing whatever it takes to win this 1990 Fall Classic. But this 87th World Series not only has national championship implications, it has some sentimental twists as well. For instance, the managers for the two teams, Lou Pinella and Tony La Russa, were not only opponents and teammates at one time, but the two grew up together in West Tampa, Florida. Tony Perez, the Reds' first base and hitting coach, was a member of the 72 Cincinnati team that met the A's in the World Series. Perez was also the leading hitter in that series. Well, this is special for me. I mean, uh, I play a lot of World Series and, uh, as a player. Uh, right now, that's my first one as a coach, and I uh, really enjoyed it. I mean, it's, it's, uh, this is the place to be in this time of the year in October. And then there's the Cobra, Dave Parker. A face familiar to both teams, having played with the Reds from 1984 to 87, and with the A's in 1988 and 89. Does he have a sentimental favorite? It's tough for me, uh, no sentimental favorite, but I got real close uh, relationships to both sides of uh, both series. And in this case, uh, Oakland, I played with for two years. And on the uh, Cincinnati Reds side, uh, Eric Davis is one of my closest friends. Probably what I consider my baseball son, along with Barry Larkin and quite a few of the other guys that know extremely well. Sentiments or not, the A's are familiar with World Series action, this being their third straight appearance, having the one that coveted crown last year. And they're looking to make it back-to-back -back this year. Well, I think uh, Oakland A's, the key is consistency. Uh, we don't go up and down a lot. Uh, we may lose a game every now and then, but we do play the same brand of baseball day in and day out. And... We try to get good pitching and, you know, solid hitting and, you know, uh, play good defense and, and win a lot of ball games. And that's taken us to, you know, three world championships in a row. And uh, people say dynasty, but I like to say consistency. But is this the making of a dynasty? I think so. I heard a lot of people say that we would have to win the World Series this year to become, become considered a dynasty. But no, I, I think this dynasty has been going on for probably two or three years now with the ability we have, the team, the talent, the way we get along, uh, manager Tony La Russa, I definitely think it's a dynasty right now. I think we got a, a bunch of great ball players. I think we got some guys that can get along with one another. We respect one another. And the biggest thing is going out there playing with the respect for one another. And that's why, you know, they, I think they call us dynasty because we play so well that with one another. Dynasty or not, the Reds aren't taking the A's lying down. Not with hard hitters like outfielder Eric Davis, shortstop Barry Larkin, and who can overlook the best finishers in baseball, the Nasty Boys. Relief pitchers Ron Dibble, Gary Myers, and Norm Carlton. Nope, the Reds are not going to be taken lightly.
Um, you know, no one picked us to finish first in our division. No one picked us to beat the Pirates, and no one's picking us to beat the A's. But we believe in ourselves, and we have an opportunity to do that, so we're going to go after it with everything we have. Well, I think this series, as well as uh, the series we had with Pittsburgh, um, we went out there and we had a very aggressive style. And, uh, you know, I think we came out like gangbusters throughout the whole season, matter of fact. And you know, our style's been very aggressive. We get people on base. We make things happen. We get guys on base. We run. We, uh, you know, try to put pressure on the defense, try to put pressure on the pitcher. We got a great team together, you know. We all believe in ourselves. We believe, we believe that we can do this. Well, one thing can be said after this fall classic, whether it's the A's or Reds taking the crown, the hunt for a Reds October is over. For BT Sports, this is Bonsi Abona. Of course, game four will be played tonight in Oakland, and uh, the Cincinnati Reds have a commanding 3 to nothing lead in the series. No team has ever come back from a 3 nothing deficit in a World Series to win. So, of course, the Oakland A's, if they want to three-peat, as they say, or repeat from last year's championship, will have to get on the stick tonight against the Cincinnati Reds. Of course, the same two pitchers who pitched in game number one will be on the mound tonight. Dave Stewart for the Oakland A's and Jose Rio for the Cincinnati Reds. Of course, the Cincinnati Reds won it 7 0 in game number one, and the Oakland A's are going to try not to have a repeat of game one's performance. And we'll be back with the second half kickoff of today's game in just a moment. Stay with us. Toyota downtown earlier today. We're at halftime here. 17 to 10 is our score. Boy, you see, uh, Howard University is really getting trounced up in Washington, D.C. Who did Graham, play? A&T and Gramlin's losing to Jackson. What? They haven't even started yet, have they? Yes. And Gramlin? That hot dog and Coke is looking better, Doug. Oh, man, don't tell me that. <laughs> Check out some of the halftime first half statistics as you look at South Carolina State on the left, Florida and M on the right. Passing yards, of course, a big factor for the Rattlers, or 127. And the rushing yards favor the Rattlers, so they have out statistic the South Carolina State Bulldogs by 210 to 74 in total yards, but the key and what has helped South Carolina State so far is the fact that they uh, had that long kickoff return. Well, I think that's the only offense that they have been able to muster today has been the um, kickoff return. Other than that, they haven't been able to put anything together to get a drive going. The rushing leaders, John Brown, 45 yards on 10 carries. Amir Rasul, 60 yards on 9 carries. Of course, York is the quarterback for South Carolina State. Stacey LeMay, 5 of 17 as far as receiving is concerned. You've got Houston with one reception for South Carolina State. He's been just about all of their offense as far as the passing game is concerned. And Mickens for Florida a &M with two receptions, 48 yards. Amir Rasul, the leading receiver coming out of the backfield with three for 30 yards. Charlie, I got one thing to say about this upcoming second half. It needs to be a running game if we're going to catch this flight. <laughs> <laughs> well, halftime is over with. <laughs> got that out of the way, huh? Boy, he got a dangerous-looking rattler down there. Real dangerous rattler. <laughs> You've got a rattler up here, don't you, Doug? Yeah, I got one. You hear him? You hear him, don't you? <laughs> And those people came in with the skydiving exhibition at the beginning of the game, and they're taking off now. They've enjoyed their first half, ROTC. We'd like to say to all the boys team. over in the uh, Saudi Arabia that's being our desert shield for us. All the cappers that are over there, I know it's a lot of newts over there. They're strong, tough fighters. Duncan Rock, Brooks, all the brothers that live in Detroit from here at Alpha Z. Kappa chapter, Tallahassee, Florida, and you. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's check out, of course, next week we'll be in Richmond. CIAA matchup, Norfolk State, Virginia Union. They're battling right now. That game being played at Norfolk. We did not have a... We did have a score in the game, but I forgot what it was. <laughs> anyway, Virginia Union uh, and Hampton was leaving Tuskegee. That was the big uh, surprise. Third, oh. 25 to 6. Oh, oh. Makes Arden happy, huh? <laughs> There's the Southern Division. Winston-Salem has already wrapped it up. 
in the Southern Division. So we know that on November 10th, it'll be Winston-Salem in the CIAA Championship game against either Virginia Union, Virginia State, Norfolk. <laughs> it'll be one of, those, one of those three teams. So the second half kickoff uh, about to get underway after the long halftime and all of the pageantry. That's out of the way. Let's see how much of a penalty we get from Florida and M. All the way back to the 25-yard line. See, no matter how long, it's a 20-minute halftime, and that is the uh, that is the the um, rule. No matter what the festivities are, 20 minutes, <laughs> you can go an hour, and you still only get the 15 yards. Well, would, you, would you think that uh, Coach Riley would go talk to uh, President Humphrey? No, 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 no. It's, half, it's, it's homecoming. Okay. <laughs> have fun. That's right? right. Have fun. They'll take the they'll take the penalty. It's homecoming. Okay. Next week, we'll be in Richmond. And, of course, tonight on BET at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Transfer student. There's only one. There will be boxing right here on BET with Tony Tubbs. Tony Tubbs up in Atlantic City. Charles K. will be there along be with Leland Harley and Elmer Smith They're all doing the honors. Right now you have Charlie Neal, Doug Williams, and Lim Barney here in Orangeburg at Bragg Stadium on the campus, I should say Tallahassee, <laughs> on the campus of Florida a &M. This is the 31st meeting between the two schools, and you see the series lead belongs to the Rattlers of Florida A&M. And they will be kicking off to South Carolina State. You see Carl Davis on the near side, Lumpkin on the far side, as the second half is about to get underway here. Comes down to one of the up men for South Carolina State and trying to find some running room before being brought down was Owen Belton, the fullback. I'll tell you, Ken had one of the keys to winning is improve on special teams play, and today, right now, I would venture to say South Carolina State has over 200 yards on kickoff returns. <laughs> They have a lot of them. One for a touchdown. On every turn, they've ended up in pretty good field position, if Excellent. not in the end zone. That's right. That's <laughs> First down and 10 at their own 43-yard line, South Carolina State. Second back through is Brown. And Brown struggles up across the 45 to about the 48-yard line. Seen something in South Carolina offense I hadn't seen. A man in motion. <laughs> Gain of about four to be second down and six. And here's York, the quarterback, on the keeper. Has the first down. Brown calls the fumble. But he has the first down into Florida A&M territory and inside the 45 to about the 43-yard line, 44. And you talk about kickoff returns, uh, 3 for 138. Ooh. That's not good. Not for the, the polls and special teams. <laughs> and one touchdown. <laughs> In great field position every time they've returned it. John Brown dips inside and back outside, still on his feet, and helped by the tackler to gain another yard, giving seven on the play. Good hard running, though. Tough running by John Brown. I know his father, John Brown Sr., who's an excellent golfer. I think he's trying for, this, uh, for the tour. He's number four in the conference, John Brown is, in uh, scoring 36 points coming into the game. 89 last year, he led the team in rushing with 693 yards and had 187 yards and a pair of touchdowns in this game against Florida A&M. Here's Brown again, trying to bounce outside. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Martha Reeves and the Vandellas, 1972. And Keith Austin made sure, the senior out of Edison High in Miami, leading tackler on this FAMU team. The linebacker, number 48, making the stop. Coach you know, Jeffries. You know, sometimes, you know, runner got that nip to feet like John Brown does here. He's in and out. Sometimes it just pays just to go straight ahead and gain that one yard and not try to make a big play out of it. On the option, the pitch, fumble, Brown falls on it back at the 45-yard line. 
Good job by John Brown. Fourth for down. This throwaway, throwaway option by quarterback yard. Brings up a fourth down, as Charlie mentioned, dictating a punting situation. <laughs> the market at the 48. Here it is. The pressure up front. Ill-advised toss. And the pressure applied by Wayne Key. And back to punt it is Richard Dickerson. Good job of John Brown covering his body up, too. That's Tyrone Davis, the deep man, to return it. Good snap. Left-footed kicker. It'll go out of bounds. Boy. He really shanked that. South Carolina, South Carolina State squandered a good field position opportunity and well as well as kicking the ball and bad punting. We saw bad punting in both the uh, South Carolina State and Howard game as well. 15 yards on the punt. They'll mark it at the 32. And when we come back, Florida and m will have the ball first and 10. They lead by a touchdown. 500 destinations nationwide for you to choose from. And by Budweiser, Beachwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. And by Pizza Hut, home of Pan Pizza that's winning the hearts of America. Pizza Hut, making it great. Charlie Neal, Lim Barney, Doug Williams, 12.02 left third quarter, 17-10. Fam, you getting the ball for the first time in the second half. And the handoff is to Pat Reddick, the sophomore from Tallahassee's Lincoln High. Eighth leading rusher in the MEAC. Goes off the right side for maybe a couple. It'll be second down and eight. And there's a running back comparison. We talked about these two good running backs, Brown and Rasul. Brown 55 yards so far in the contest. Rasul 60. Both of them are, and a touchdown. Both of them are legitimate. They can carry it to distance. Ezel. Back to pass on second and eight. Steps up, throws, has a man complete, still on his feet. And finally brought down from behind. After the good reception, Florida a and m and that's Tyrone Davis. Tackled by Cedric Davis. Tyrone gives him great field position all the way down to the 35-yard line. Tell you what, that's good for two catches for Tyrone today. That's a great job by the linebacker. Watch the linebacker. He didn't give up. He didn't quit. Tyrone avoids the tackle here by the defensive back. Linebacker having great depth was able to come up and make a touchdown-saving tackle. Cedric Davis on Tyrone Davis. He wanted to change his mind. <laughs> <laughs> Back to pass again. Stepped up. Throws. Complete. Diving catch made this time by James Thurman. I tell you, before he's there, leaves here, he's going to set all kind of records. The pass, the play before this, I mean, he set up perfect, delivered the football, perfect timing. Just then, he stepped up in the pocket and got rid of the football. Those things you got to do in order to be a good quarterback. Look forward to seeing it, the orange blossom. Yeah, Here's the hatches of being a referee. That's with the umpire. Yes. You got to get your head out of there. <laughs> <laughs> they get smashed in the mouth once in a while Second also. Second and one. They run it straight ahead. They get the first down. Carrying people down inside the 20 to the 18 is Pat Reddick. 5'9", 205 sophomore. Lincoln High in Tallahassee. Came into the game averaging five yards per carry. You know, all of the running backs, just about, are averaging around 4'8". Jonathan Jones, 5'7". LeMay, 5'4", 8". Pat Reddick, 5'1". Rasul, 5.9 yards per carry. Saying a lot for that offensive line also. Well, and in a passing offense, yeah. it does very well. Here's Rasul, cuts back nicely. And is banged down at the 10-yard line. But well, one thing you can say for South Carolina, I mean, uh, Florida and m that South Carolina State doesn't have right now. Florida and m has a well-balanced attack. Fine passing and great receivers and outstanding quarterback. And as Charlie just made a testament to, the, the least amount of yards that a running back is carrying is four points something in average. And the thing is, you know, when, the, when you're a primary running team and you don't have a great passing game and you get behind in a game like this, it is hard to catch up. You put a lot of strain on the receivers and the quarterback and the offensive line. Ezell steps up. 
Decides to keep it. Throws. Oh, great defensive play in the end zone by William Weaver. Good play by Ezell. And 95, Walt Wilson was all over it. It was a good play by Ezell, but if that pass had been completed, it would have been a great play. I know. <laughs> but William Weaver made, kept his head on a swivel. The, yes, he did. The uh, defensive back, the strong safety, and came over and knocked it away. But it, Weaver. it also shows you how strong Ezell arm is because he threw that ball with his feet off the, the ground. In the air. Off the ground with the big guys draped Watch all this. over him like a curtain. Here it is. So you got to have an arm to do that. <laughs> Good athletic ability. Cedric Davis also was there. Here's the run. Rasul, first and goal at the two-yard line. Finally brought down. Ricky, no, not Ricky Hill. By South Carolina State's Todd Logan. Watch the acceleration here. He puts it in first gear, second gear, third gear. He smells the end zone. Lim, did you know he used to be a defensive back? Yes. Converted. <laughs> yes. Ninth all-time rusher at Florida a and It is first and goal. Florida a and at the two. Rasul, the second back in the eye. Reddick straight ahead. Knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Reddick on the carry. Not only Reddick, but, but <laughs> Ezell got a pop That's right. Mouth. He certainly did by Joe Montford. Henderson on the stop. Yeah, Montford uh, said, I'm going to get to the quarterback. This is what defense is about. Life is a cinch by the inch, but tough by the yard. So take the inches in life. <laughs> it is second and goal. They're going against the number one defense in the nation. Ezell has a real fool out there. He will not get it away. Great defense. Kennedy. Great defense. Baby is here. And a flag is down in the end zone. Perhaps holding. Well, let's see. 84 is looking like, hey, I didn't do it. Jeremy Faulkner, the linebacker. There's Reggie Kennedy, who sacked the quarterback, and it's against South Carolina State. I guess when you can't cover them, you hold them. <laughs> well, Rasul was trying to get out there if we see it again. And, of course... Ezell was trying to direct traffic, <laughs> and Rasul had trouble getting into the pattern. See here? See Rasul to the top of your screen left. He goes out of your picture right now, and there's Ezell trying to direct traffic, but he couldn't get away. So that's an automatic first down, half the distance. Holding. South Carolina State, five-yard penalty, half the distance. Still second down. Oh, second down. Correction. Not first. Second down. Remains the ball to stay for the second down for the Raptors. Reddick. Rasul at the one, stacked up. They jumped a jumper for a loss. <laughs> at the bottom of the pile was number two, William Weaver. Dream Weaver. The strong safety, fifth year senior out of Memphis, North Side He's High. He's hurting too, Charlie. He He's really hurting. came up and jumped up in there. He's hurting. He stopped that play. He's hurting, too. I'll tell you what. His job is to jump to jumper. Here's the ball being handed off to Rasul. Rasul is up, and here's the Dream Weaver coming up to jump to jumper. Okay. He's down. 7.22 left third quarter. We would like to remind you that there are four And again, Coming into this game, South Carolina State had allowed only two touchdowns rushing this season. And four in the air. Only six touchdowns. As you look at William Weaver, the young man out of Memphis, the uh, one touchdown that they allowed was Rasul's 44-yard run. <laughs> that was only the second rushing touchdown this year. Third rushing touchdown they allowed this year. For Florida a &M, you talk about a balanced attack. They had come into the game with 11 touchdowns rushing, 11 touchdowns passing. Don't look too good right there for the Dreamweaver. He's hurting. Well, he made a great defensive play that time. They lost a little distance, as you see what the Bulldogs have done on defense. And they're second in one other category. Third down conversions. They're four of eight, Florida a &M. Here's a big third down conversion. Third and down. goal at the one-yard line. Bootleg. Rasul 
Oh, tough down there. It certainly was. Defense to Bulldogs. I believe the first man to make the stop was Sean Phillips. Number 81. They call it a fumble. Oh, uh -oh. referee's got up the, the fist indicating four fourth down. down. Oh. And there's another man in there on the stop. Defensively, that's Walt Wilson, the junior. Hadley also made the stop. Another cornerback, Darius Hadley, number 37. So it is fourth down. Virtuno will come on to try to tack three more on. He has already kicked a couple of extra points and a field goal in this one. Outstanding job again by the defense of South Carolina State. 17-yard attempt by Virtuno. They had six plays down here within the red zone, the scoring zone, and didn't get it into the end zone. And it's good. So, Virtuno with two field goals in the game. This one from 17 yards out. And it makes it a 10-point advantage for Florida A&M in the third quarter with 6.31 remaining. Florida and m started at their own 32-yard line. They bogged down at the 1 after 11 plays and using up 5 minutes and 31 seconds off the clock. And Jimmy Fortuno's 17-yard uh, field goal gave him 8 points in the game. He is just 3 shy of the all-time school record for scoring in a career. He came into the game with 195 points. He has 203 right now. Davis from the 11. Davis, still on his feet, bounces outside. Davis, midfield and out of bounds in front of the Florida a and bench. Tell you what, the special teams has been a big boost for the South Carolina State's offense today. You see his stats coming in. Remember, there was 138 yards on kickoff returns prior to that one. <laughs> they call him the Trey. Carl Davis the third, just a great relentless run here. He wasn't going to be denied. Here he goes. He did a lot of it on his own right yes, up he in did. here when he broke this tackle. Here, here he goes. Two yeah. would-be tacklers there. He bounces it out again. They do an excellent job of blocking the South Carolina State's kickoff return team. So the 177 yards in four kickoff returns. The pass is complete on the near side to Jeffrey Mack. And Mack has a first down. At the 36-yard line of Florida A&M. They're trailing by 10. And there's a player shaking up for Florida A&M back in the backfield. And he's a little slow getting up. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, I think that's South Carolina's second. That's completion. Jerome Hamlet. Jerome Hamlet, correct. Linebacker out of Delray Beach, Florida. Atlantic High. Rubbing that knee. 6'10 remaining. As you look in the eyes of Ronald York, the baseball player, ninth leading passer in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, who has been offered a baseball pitching contract by the Minnesota Twins. I tell you, for a quarterback, he has some awful large pads. <laughs> Hey, you don't want to get hurt when you're a baseball player. I, well, I guess then again, you're running that veer and that option, too. You're going to take a little more punishment than the average quarterback who's going to be a drop back pass. 6-10 remaining third quarter. And they're attending to him. That was a 13-yard reception by Jeffrey Mack a moment ago, the senior from Clark Central High in Athens, Georgia. Young man who moved from the defensive back position a year ago. You're talking about these guys who move from defense to, to offense. <laughs> they must not have that temperament. You know, defensive <laughs> players have a different temperament than offensive players. Well, I moved from offense to defense. <laughs> so, therefore, you didn't have an offensive temperament. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> but, I was, but I was offensively orientated. Yeah. But you were mean. That's what he put you on defense. They always told me defensive back. Split crew. Split crew. Yeah. What'd you say, Doug, about defensive back? What they always told me about defensive back was washed up quarterbacks. <laughs> right? Well, he was a That's right. former quarterback. That's right. First and 10 at the 36-yard line of Florida a &M. South Carolina State has the ball. They're on the move. This drive started at their own 49. Play action. York steps up. Throws. Nobody down there. But the orange jerseys, the closest man to it was Shula, the tight end. Um, 
South Carolina State passing in the first half, 13 yards. In the third quarter, 13 yards. He must have been throwing that in the Bambi. <laughs> yeah, because... A uh, Harvey. Well, he was getting it away, I'll tell you, because he felt the heat. He did a good job there, getting away from that first rush. Sean Lambert almost had him. Close his second eyes. and ten. Here's Ronald York. He keeps it and gains a yard. Third and nine. I didn't understand that option. Well, there was I think nobody it to option as, two. I think it started off as a pass play, and he just thought maybe he'd take things in his own hands and run with the football. Chris Blue, one of the men on the stop defensively. You know, Florida A&M came into this game three and three. Over the last five years, if you take their record at this particular juncture in the season, they've been 35, 35, and three. <laughs> it's a lot of threes. Yeah. It? They're even. Yeah. Who was he throwing to? Harvey. Well, he got hit as he was throwing the football. Well, the closest man to it, well, I believe, was number 28. Well, he knows they able to get his arm going as strong as he wanted to because he had too much pressure. Austin was all over him. And that was Pat Belton, another running back who was blocking. So to bring up a fourth down. Watch here. As he was throwing the football, he was being hit. Austin right here yeah. on him. Yeah, but he hit him on the left side, not on the throwing come side. Come on, come on, Charlie. <laughs> Easy on him. <laughs> Four, fourth, fourth down. down. <laughs> so they gain a few yards, but they wind up having to punt it away. And let's see. It gets into the end zone. That'll be brought out to the 20. Florida and m will go to work first down and 10 at their own 20-yard line, 5.02. Left third quarter, 20-10 to 10 is our score with the Rattlers leading the Bulldogs. Final, Mars Brown beats Livingstone in a CIAA SIC interconference matchup. Whoa. And here's an upset, if you want to call it that. A&T came in unbeaten, but this is Howard's homecoming. They were playing at home, and they lose big by 21 points. It was their worst defeat in a couple of years to the Aggies of North Carolina A&T, and they are proving that they're for, we for real. Ezell, wide open, has it complete at the 45-yard line. James and Thurman. that's James Thurman on the reception, but a flag is way back in the... Uh, Holding against Florida and m so that'll nullify that. Oh, boy. I'll tell you what, that was a great throw and a tremendous catch here. Why he threw this ball off his back feet? Well, they complement each other. Oh, he's great. Only, he does that because he's got a great arm. Great catch. Illegal use of hands, Florida and m Five-yard penalty, first and 15. And that would have been a 25-yard reception all the way out to the 45-yard line, but the illegal use of hands penalty got outside of the man's body. That's what happened. I tell you, it wasn't that, really holding. No, it wasn't really holding. But that pass, too, also proved that he does have a real, real strong arm. I mean, he threw that by one Certainly foot. Certainly does. Going Kent, backwards. Kent Schoolfield, the offensive coordinator for Ken Riley, has him rolling right now. And they keep the ball on the ground. And into the secondary is Reddick. And Reddick gets back all but about four yards, maybe two of the 15 that they needed. It'll be second down and two. Here's a load. Watch the blocking. Good and this is what happened here. to Stacy LeMay when he got hurt. They brought Reddick in, and you see, you can't sometimes lose your job to people. They say you can't get hurt. They say if you stay in the tub, you lose the club. Or you can't make the club in the tub. <laughs> That's for sure. Straight ahead, they get the first down. Again, Reddick running the ball from the fullback spot. I know at Gramlin, we was in there, they say if you come up lane, you miss the plane. <laughs> Tell you what, the coach used to always say, don't lay your glove on the mound to fit somebody else's hand. <laughs> That's exactly the way it is. That's the truth. I mean, you always have somebody Hi, poopy. Hi, back there waiting on you. Hi, poopy. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever that is, all right? For the family, you're Morgan State game. Tickets will be available. All tickets have to be the family ticket office. It is first down at 10. 
Ball at the 34-yard line, and Ezell wants to go to the air. Throws, has it complete. It's the Patrick, Pat, Pat Redrick series. And Redick, yeah, he's three straight plays. He's been involved, and he's out across the 40, a yard shy of a first down and a gain of nine to the 42-yard line. I tell you, Coach Riley's put a, a, a well of a offensive scheme together. As far as passing, I uh, probably got one of the most sophisticated passing games I've seen in, in small college ranks. And probably in some of the big college ranks. <laughs> well, against the pass, South Carolina State has given up about 113 yards a game. And here's Rasul. Look at the move. And look at him cut back inside and pick up the first down at the 47, 48-yard line. He gave the leg outside and juke back inside and left the defensive back flat-footed. You like those kind of runners, didn't you, Lim? Yes, sir. <laughs> a guy who could give a leg, take a leg, and shake a tail feather. <laughs> you didn't like trying to stop those guys, did you? No, you got to get they them make, quick. They make you break your ankle. You got to get them quick. You can't let him uh, get his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage. He'll do something nasty to you. <laughs> Talking about the nasty boys of Cincinnati, huh? Yes, sir. How do you like how do you like the series so far? I Three love zip. it. I do, too. I love Lou Pinella. Go, Lou. I like Lou, but I'm a Faze fan. I have to admit. Faze. What a catch. Yeah, catch at the what last minute. He put his hands up and came down with it. Tim Daniel, the sophomore from Atlanta's Bags High. I tell you what, it was a great catch, but let me tell you one thing, what the quarterback did here. He put the ball up, the defense had his back turned, and he threw it where he could throw it with his back turned. So he couldn't see the ball at all, but the receiver knew where the ball was. That was Vernon Greer at the last moment. Looked up, and the receiver did a good job of not letting the defender know that the ball was coming. Exactly. What a study in concentration there by Tim Daniels. 27 yards on the reception and a timeout being called by South Carolina State. So well it should be at this juncture. Tim Daniel, sophomore out of Atlanta. You know, he had 152 yards a week ago against Delaware State in receptions. First time to do it, lost less than one and a half games. Two for 63 in this game. It is a timeout with a minute 54 left third quarter. 20 to 10, and the Rattlers threatening once again. Inside the 25-yard line for Skippy Zell, who's 12 of 19, 203, and a touchdown. He's trying to add to that. Incomplete. Charlie, I think you're getting your quarterbacks confused. You say Skippy Ezell. You remember Skippy Ezell? Oh, uh, yeah, Tony Ezell, I meant. Okay, that's an old Grambler quarterback. Sure was. Skippy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've watched him fired up a few times, too. And that's what's happened so far this year. Florida and m and their opponents, they've outscored their opponents coming in by one point. You see, they've scored their most points in the fourth quarter, 64. That's an average of 6.7.4 point, uh, point, points per quarter. Ezell lets it go. Flag is down. It's a touchdown in the end zone. Let's see what the flag is about. There's no touchdown. He dropped it. Oh, he dropped it? Well, it was there. John McClendon just came into the booth. The Super Coach, Hall of Famer, Naismith Hall of Fame. Coach Booker. Coach Booker, the basketball coach at Florida a &M. Meanwhile, let's see what the flag is all about. This young man, Greer's had a rough day. Indeed he has. Oh. But it's holding against South Carolina State. They've been flagged about three times for that. <laughs> they can't keep up with those receivers, so you try to hold them. Defensive holding, South Carolina State, 10 yards, automatic first down. Larry Hill. Did Mr. Hill, the young man that was in the uh, meeting with us, the preseason meeting, going over the new rule changes and all this year? I thought I recognized that voice and mustache. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that has been a great, great touchdown reception there. He sort of lost concentration right as he's hitting the ground. Back to live action. They keep it on the ground. Rasul trying to dance outside. But he gets help. Ricky Hill. Feed. Sugar feed. That <laughs> sounded like a good running it. back. He was hit hard, but Twice. he was the only one standing up. Twice. Ricky Hill and Robert Reeves came up to knock him out of bounds, and that's about all he did. He was hit hard twice. <laughs> Sugar shoes. It is second down and nine. Give him about a half a yard after all of that. Thank <laughs> you. 
question was asked, how would we compare Lewis Tillman to Rasul? I don't think there is a comparison. <laughs> right. Here's a fade. Leap. Ooh. Incomplete. Leave your feet for a coach. In the end zone, intended for handsome Harry Brown. I told Harry Brown, I said, there's 16 catches, but you've only been downtown twice, and that's in the end zone. <laughs> he leave his feet here. He's in the end zone again. He Bring wants to stand up. Yeah, he wanted to stand up. Darius Hadley was the man defending on that side on Harry Brown. Fifth leading receiver in the MEAC out of Hialeah High in Miami. It is third down. There's Nine a, yards to go. There's a virtue that can't be taught. Coach can't teach him to leave his feet. He has to want to do that. Ezell back to pass again. Time. Throws. Incomplete. Good defense down there. Eugene Brown on James Thurman. The crowd wanted a flag, but it was a good defensive play. Fourth good down. Timing. Vertuno will try to become the school's all-time scoring leader with a field goal of 31 yards. He has already kicked one from 38 and 17. As you see, Ricky Hill... Well, I don't know if he had a lot to do with that. There he is. <laughs> this drive started at their own 20. Ezell will hold. Ricky came up with the first turnover. First, first pass intercepted. That was thrown. The kick is up. It is good. They should give this kid the ball. They should give Bertuno this ball to keep on his memory. Bertuno, with the 31-yard field goal, becomes Florida a ms all-time leading scorer with 206 career points. A 122 remaining. 23-10, Florida a m out in front. Eight two. <laughs> Texas Southern, the rest of the gang. Here's Jer Jimmy Bertuno. He's the senior and going out in fine fashion out of Tallahassee, Florida High. South Carolina State has allowed Florida a to hold the ball for nine minutes and ten seconds in two drives in this third quarter. Lumpkin. He can take it the distance. There he is. And he's hit at the 41-yard line. But he was trying. He certainly was. From the last field goal, from the last field goal, Jimmy Virtuo becomes the all-time leading scorer in the family with 206 points. Stadium announcer just made the analogy about Fortuno becoming the all-time leading scorer in FAMU history. And they he should gives, give the kid the ball to keep for his memoir. There he is, Jimmy Fortuno. Quite a young man. I've had a chance to even have pizza with him. <laughs> there he is. First down and ten. No. And uh, it's complete, but not much running room for Quincy Miller. Hospital After the pass. reception. Hospital pass. <laughs> he gained about three yards on the reception. Hey, three that's yards and a headache. That's kind of pass you want to get back at the receiver. You yes, want the sir. quarterback to throw in one of those. One huh? of those hitches, yeah, and let it be late. Antoine Bennett, the man that came up to really put the pop on Quincy Miller. You can't throw a hitch late. It is second down and seven. York tight end. Throws, has it complete. First down in the Florida a m territory to the 42-yard line. Patrick On Belton. the reception is Belton, the brother of Owen Belton. Well, no, maybe he's not. One's out of Winsboro, the other one's out of Columbia. Same, sa same, same family name. name. Yeah, daddy was a traveling full of bus cell. <laughs> <laughs> At the 42, first and 10. <laughs> Leave that alone, Lamp. We're only kidding, Mr. and Mrs. Belton. <laughs> <laughs> We're just making sport. Into the secondary again, Belton. On the carry. Close to another first down. As the clock is down to five seconds left in the third quarter. And he's about a half a yard shy of a first down. And they'll come back with this second down play in a moment. 15 minutes of football remaining here in Tallahassee. It's homecoming, 1990, for the Rattlers of Florida and m And they lead it by 13 points. South Carolina State on the move, though. They have the ball at the 32-yard line. We'll be back. The champagne. 
that, Charlie? Yeah, well, you, you know, Charlie, well, huh? Charlie's angel. <laughs> Show those guys to sit down. <laughs> Second down and inches for the Bulldogs at the 32. A Florida and m they want to pass it. York let's take off. lets it go. Miller has the reception for first down. Good. Bad job vision. by Anton Bennett. Good vision on the receiver's part to make the adjustment and make the reception. Quincy <laughs> Miller, the sophomore out of Winsboro, South Carolina. Let's take off. You know, a lot of times about that fade is sometimes it's better to throw it behind the receiver than in front of the receiver because when you throw it behind, the defensive back is trying to get such a position and the receiver see the ball and just stop. At the 18-yard line, first and 10 after the 15-yard reception, the stats on Miller coming in. York, the quarterback, keeps it, runs right, wants to throw. He's sacked. And that's Keith Austin, senior out of Edison High in Miami. Leading tackler on the team. Came into the game with 12 career sacks. And that's his first of the day. He got to have better vision than what he has. I mean, he, he, he runs so close to his blocking where the man plays off his block, he's right at his feet. That's how he was able to make that sack. A loss after the sack. And it's complete to the tight end, Herbert Schuler, with his first reception of the day. Came in with six catches for 94 yards and a touchdown. He's averaging one a game. <laughs> so it is third and about 12. So primarily he's a blocking tight end. And he calls out the no, he coverages. calls the defense. If you watch him, I mean, when he comes, yeah. I know. The integral part of that offense. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to say he don't catch the football. <laughs> right. Miller is in a slot to the right. Jeff Max split out far wide to the right, third and 12. York with time. Stands in there. Now he's in trouble. Throws it. Almost intercepted his fourth down. You'll advise throw, I tell you that. Certainly he, was. He doesn't have avoidability or escapability. He doesn't have the nifty feet. He stands in there. Yeah, like Doug Williams. <laughs> yeah, well, he, I don't know now. Nah. Doug had a better line than he's got, too. It's a little different, too. Fourth and 12, do you go for the field goal? Let's see if they send William Wright in. They may go for it. They're trailing by 13 points. They are. I, don't I, wasn't, I wasn't a speech, but I had good feet. <laughs> he had scared feet, though. No, I've never been scared, man. Come on. And it's caught short by Jeffrey Mack, but he's short of a first down. Turn over on down. And he's at the 11-yard line. That's so the they hold him on fault. down. That's the receiver's fault there. He's got to get the necessary yardage. He's got to run the route. That's going to cover the fourth down attempt. Good throw by quarterback Ronnie York. Jeffrey Mack coming up by a yard shy of that first down marker. I was talking to Ron York yesterday and was asking him about his desire to play football. He said it just killed him sitting around in the stands a year ago watching everybody else play. He said, I had to get out there and do it. And he really is surprised that he has come as far as he has because he came out of a small NAIA school in South Carolina before transferring to South Carolina State. And, you know, he didn't think he was going to do as well as he's done as, as a football player. But he's uh, surprised himself, and he loves the game so much. As I said, he's quite a pitcher in baseball, and uh, that has been advantageous for him. In his first and ten, Florida and m Rasul, still on his feet, gets maybe a yard out to about the 12 or 13-yard line. Make it two. It'll be second and eight. We're in the fourth quarter, 13-10, the time remaining. The stands will look quiet, now. I think they all feel like they got this one in the bag, but they never know what can happen. Fat lady hasn't sung, but she's got a Lavoris close to her side, though. <laughs> Ezell wants to go to the air. Stands up, throws incomplete. A little low for the intended receiver. Ricky Hill was the man covering. He has an interception in the game. And you see the Tyrone Davis was the intended receiver, number 19 there. Tyrone can't make up his mind. Well, now the coaches can't make up their mind. <laughs> I know. It. Tyrone would like to change his mind. 84 comes in. That's Tim Daniel, who's made a couple of big receptions in the game so far. He 
under pressure from Kennedy in the end zone. Let's it go. And it's in a, incomplete, rather. Boy, well, it was close to a safety. Smart play. Close to a safety. Reggie Kennedy was draped all over him. You see, he pulled his jersey off his pad. Ezell did a good job of getting rid of the not, football. Not getting sacked in the end zone. Get a chance to look at it again at an all out blitz. Here's Bebe's kid, we call him. <laughs> Too bad there's not a, in a grass rule in college because if it was, that'd be a two point safety. Especially <laughs> with that jersey coming off. Oh, right. So, oh, the stripping of the jersey. Craig Hall will punt it from his own end zone. South Carolina State needs a big play here. Maybe like they'll get a run punt. back. Maybe they'll All get a run, run back. back. And you know who's back there to receive this kick. Lumpkin. Sophomore out of Gainesville, Florida. What happened? Somebody jump off sides. There, maybe they'll... I don't know. Maybe there's somebody not on the field that's supposed to be on there. I see Reggie Kennedy, who's one of the co-captains. He's giving somebody the blues. That's Sean Phillips, because he comes on a little late. Tempo for Stocks. Offense. And it's against the offense. So they'll penalize him. Again, Mr. Hill, who's doing the officiating of the game, uh, stopped in at our preseason production meeting at BET and gave us all the new rule changes and uh, what's what for the 1990 collegiate rules and uh, college football, and we were most appreciative of it. Oh, yeah. Fine official, former supervisor of officials in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. They're coming for it. Greg Hall. They'll have 10 men coming after this one. They're going to send the kitchen sink at them this time. It's blocked. Oh, oh safe. And they get the first thing. And some more. He may go. And some more. Block. And some more. Touchdown. <laughs> Good night, Henry. 92 yards. Duck Duffy. On the run. <laughs> I mean, everybody was coming, and Duffy was way out there by himself, and nobody but Lumpkin was the closest man to him. Lumpkin's a good punt return, a good kickoff return, but he's not a good tackle, I tell you. You call that pulling the trick out the bag. Tell you what, excellent. And that was Chuck Hall with the pass. That's six yards shorter than the longest pass that they've completed this year. They completed a 98-yarder this year. This time, the young man out of Mulberry High School in Mulberry, Florida, goes 92 yards on Chuck Hall. Well, I'll tell you, Chuck Hall's got some great stats for a quarterback, doesn't he? I'll tell you what. I mean, One got, pass, 92 yards. He got more yards passing than South Carolina has in <laughs> You got a great point, Doug. 30 to 10. <laughs> we'll be back. State in the game has 71 yards passing. Chuck Hall, uh, Craig Hall has 92. <laughs> Actually, about 89 of it was done by Chuck Duffy. Chuck yeah. Duffy, look, he lays a heck of a move down on. That was Lumpkin. Well, well you Lumpkin. call that giving it and taking it away. And one more, more, one more man. And he tried to knock the the blocker into the runner to try to force him out of bounds. It was a good attempt by Eugene Brown, but all for naught as the score is a 20-point advantage for Florida A&M. Casino with the kickoff. It'll be turned by Carl Davis. 19-yard line is as far as he gets. The worst kickoff return they've had today. David Gaynor on the stop. Four plays, 89 yards, because they started at the 11, if you remember. Will penalize back. The time of possession, 58 seconds and a 92-yard touchdown on the fake punt and pass. <laughs> so South Carolina State starts at their own 20. Trailing by 20 points. They're going to have to put it up. 12-20 remaining. But then 
maybe the run will open up. You never know. Yeah. John Brown is not in the game. I wonder if John is hurt. Well, they keep it on the ground this time again with Belton. The only thing about the run, Charlie, is down by 20 points with 12 minutes left. John Brown obviously may be still suffering that uh, intestinal virus. You said he had intestinal virus last week, Charlie? Stomach virus, right. He did not uh, practice at all. Gain of two. It'll be second down and eight, years, uh, eight yards to go. It is eight years <laughs> right now when you're down 20 points. That's uh, light years when you're down that much. And they let the 25-second clock run out on them. Live game number four, Ronnie Yard. That's when you got a lot of confusion. Dead ball, delay, South Carolina State. Of Miami, 17. Notre Dame. 16 in the second quarter. I think the stadium announcer made an update on the Jackson State Glamour game. I think it's 22 to 13. Oh, did he? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Jackson? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. <laughs> that dog is tasting better. <laughs> I'm on great coupon on Green it. Green incomplete intended for Lumpkin on the near side. Great defense. But I'll tell you, they were not going to let that screen develop. That is Florida and m because Boxham. Sam Stockton, the sophomore out of Perry, Florida, came all the way over and stayed with Lumpkin. It is third down. Third and about 12. 11.37 to go. In the slot to the right is Quincy Miller. Passing down. Throws. Complete on the far side. First down. And getting out of bounds to stop the clock is Jeffrey Mack. One of the best pass plays they've had today. Jeffrey Mack takes it out to the 35-yard line. Jeffrey Mack picked up the first down. 17-yard reception. Ball is spotted at the 35-yard line of South Carolina State. They got to get it down the field and in the end zone in a hurry. Get other opportunities. First and ten. They keep it on the ground. And here's Lumpkin trying to dance outside. Still on his feet. Spins and they hold him down after a five-yard gain. He's a fine runner. Tough runner. Low center gravity. Keeps his knees turning. Try and keep his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage. Watch this. I thought maybe he had a chance to keep it outside. However, he stops to start dancing and elects to go back inside. Too much pursuit. Yes. Good team pursuit by Florida A&M defense. You know, I'm surprised. I don't know if there's an injury, but De Deion Summers has not run the ball for South Carolina State today. Here they get a complete on the far sideline. Face mask probably in it. And they're moving the ball to Rodney Hunter, the receiver that time. And we'll probably, like you said, let him get a face mask, plus he had the first down. Edwin Carter. So we're seeing a lot of different people playing now for South Carolina State. Most of the starters, as far as the running backs and... Five-yard face mask is tack on penalty. First down plus five. So it's a first down plus they tack on the five for the face mask. Edwin Carter was guilty of after Rodney Hunter made the catch to his first down at the... 45-yard line of Florida a and for the Bulldogs. 15-yard gain on that last one. Here's the draw. Lumpkin into the secondary. Still on his feet and finally brought down after a good gain of about 8 yards. Rogers on the stop defensively and made sure he wasn't going to get away from him that time. You know, I might be wrong to saying this, but I still believe you have to throw the football in order to catch up when you're behind by 20 with 10 minutes left. What you say, man? I agree with you, Doug. I've always had the philosophy that the ball travels fast in the air than it does on the ground. But what do we know? We're in the booth. But actually, that was, well, we've been out there before. <laughs> it was Williams on the stop rather than Rogers. Here's a naked bootleg. Here's York on the right side, and he gets out of bounds, gets the first down, and stops the clock. He was chased by Craig Hall. Also in there on the chase, Keith Austin. Fifty-five to go. Thirty to ten, our score. Florida and M. A 
ahead by 20. South Carolina State won last year's meeting in Orangeburg, 28-26. Here's Lumpkin straight up the middle on the draw, still on his feet, and bounces down first for first down at the 20-yard line. I think they might have Florida and them playing pass defense, and that run is really opening up. That's okay. I said, you remember I said that at the beginning of this drive. I said, you know, you look like you would think they would obviously have to pass, but in this situation, you know, the run may open up. And it has opened it, up. It has opened up for them. 21 yards on that run. Lumpkin again, trying to get outside, but nothing doing that time as Ari Ian Connor made the stop. Sophomore out of Kissimmee, Oceola High on the stop. Where, where is that? Uh, Kissimmee? Kissimmee, Florida. <laughs> Kissimmee, Florida. That's down near uh, Orlando. Orlando, yeah. Right outside of Disney World. Some people call it Kissimmee, some people call it Kissimmee. <laughs> Kissimmee. <laughs> Which one you prefer, Tom? It's all right. Well, I'm not from Florida, so I call it Kissimmee. <laughs> okay, Kissimmee, Florida. <laughs> It is second down. Back to pass is York. Throws, has the man out there. Quincy Good Miller. Drive the ball. Good Got a throw. first down. Quincy Miller just would not hold on to it. That indicates a fine arm because he's throwing it against the grain all the way across field. The ball has to travel a pretty far distance. That's about a 40 yard out. <laughs> exactly. Here it is. He had a lot of velocity on it. On the money. Yep. No concentration. He didn't WBIH. You got to watch ball in hand. Edwin Carter. Hit, hit him in the wrong spot. Edwin, in the hand. Edwin Carter was the man uh, defending. Davis. And Jeffrey Mack are the wide outs on the far side now. Back to pass. Throws into the end zone. Has a man there. Mendenhall can't get to it. Darrell Mendenhall, the senior tight end out of Columbia, South Carolina. He ran a good post corner. Quarterback didn't get it up and down. Walt Wilson, the defensive tackle, looking on. 8.44 left. And it brings up a fourth down situation. They got to go for it. Back to pass. York stands in there. Incomplete overthrown intended for Carl Davis second series. at the nine-yard line. So they turn it over again on downs the second straight time, driving from their own 20. And they get all the way down to the 21-yard line of Florida and m but no further. 8.42 remaining. We'll be back. Agony of defeat. Like you said, it's not over yet. But they keep it on the ground right now and into the secondary, running some new blood in the lineup for Marty and M, and that's Jonathan Jones Jr. out of Bradenton Southeast High. Give the youngsters a chance to play. When you're up by 20, clock running. Let's see what the youngsters could do. And it's first down and 10. At the 40-yard line, just shy of the 40. Option. Nope. They did keep it on the ground. Well, it still kept it on the ground. I thought the quarterback kept it there for a moment. <laughs> you know, they hadn't pitched the ball on the option. They ran it about four times mm -hmm. all day, but the quarterback really hadn't given it up <laughs> as far as pitching the ball. So we want to remind all our viewers that, uh, you know, we do other things other than football here on BET. Tonight we'll have a crew up in Atlantic City doing some boxing. We want you to tune in at 9 p.m. Eastern. Tony Tubbs will be up there as we are boxing the night series continues right here on BET, 9 p.m. Eastern. And they keep the ball on the ground with Alonzo Ashwood. Alonzo Ashwood on the On a second down, he gains a couple. It'll be third and about four. A little four miles from the airport. Well, 
20 points, we can have an overtime, Charlie. <laughs> Never <laughs> like happened. We did in South Carolina about a month ago. Here's a pitch. Ashwood cuts it back inside, trying to get to the first down stick, and he'll be short by about a yard. I think South Carolina going to be a little cautious for his point on this one. No question. <laughs> well, they're not in the same position either. The backs are not up against the goal line. You know, that was obvious you wanted to try to block that. They might bring the, bring the chains in, Charlie. It's that close. I didn't think it was that close, but maybe it I was. I didn't either, but... Uh... That, they got this, that foot. <laughs> they got that foot Left spot. Left foot, right foot. Well, it's been great weather, 80 degrees, great crowd, and great activities. Band day, 25 different high school bands represented for South Carolina State with a good halftime show, as was Florida A&M. And you see how short they are for first down. And this is just outside the mid midfield strike. Previous play brings up fourth down and And we'll be looking next week for another capacity crowd down in Peters, uh, Richmond, Virginia. Virginia Union and Virginia State in the Gold Bowl. Fourth and inches. South Carolina going to play it cautious here. They're going to back hey, off. Nupi. Good to see My you. My man is here. I escort to the airport. My, pol <laughs> My police chief. Yes, sir. <laughs> Cap also. He always comes through. Yes, sir. They hope, and it does, go into the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> Timeout with 4.59 to go. South Carolina State down 20 points after a 48-yard punt by Craig Hall, who threw a 92-yard touchdown. <laughs> Last time he touched the ball, he decided he'd kick it for 48 this time. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> Williams here in Tallahassee, Florida. Florida and ms homecoming. 4.59 to be exact. South Carolina State with the ball at their own 20. First down and 10 and trailing by 20 points in this one. It's been a great homecoming showing for Florida and m And this one is complete, complete to Quincy Miller. Steps out of bounds and stops the clock. Chai of a first down by about two yards. A gain of eight on the play. So Florida and m at this point looks like they'll remain unbeaten in conference play, as will North Carolina A&T. So that'll be... Eight yards on the play. A very... No, I shouldn't say A&T is unbeaten. They lost to Florida A&M. So Florida A&M will be on top of the heat because Howard lost today. Right. Again, they keep it on the ground with Pat Belton carrying this time. He gets the first down across the 30 to about the 34-yard line. 4.45 remaining. Clock continuing to run. <laughs> Charlie Lim got that clock moving. Yes, sir. They got a flight to catch. <laughs> you must stand and uh, enjoy some of the homecoming festivities, I understand. Where, you know, you just can't get a flight in the exact rate of time. Boom! And great catch. Great catch. Made at the 41-yard line by Daryl Mendenhall, who had some knee problems, but I'll tell you, he's a good one. If you're going to pay for it, you might want to catch This young man's might in grad school. He graduated in May, and he's working on his master's degree right now. And a headache, too. Boom. Well, I was, might as well hold on to the ball. You're going to get hit anyhow, yeah. right? <laughs> 24 yards on the reception. First and 10 to the 41-yard line of Florida a &M with 4.05 left in the game. York again looking on the slant pattern has a complete inside to Todd Houston and Houston gains about five yards second and five and up they move it across inside the 35 to about the 33 yard line he'll be about a well, yard shy of a first down Florida a m plays Morgan State next week that game in Miami South Carolina State goes up against the strong Delaware State team a week from now Second and one. 
New York goes to the air, has a man out there. Davis, touchdown, South Carolina State. Change their mind. <laughs> Carl Davis. The Trey. 32 yards. I mean, he had him out there wide open. Nobody was five yards within him. So, here it is. They rank sixth in passing offense. And Ronald York throws his third touchdown pass of the year. And for Carl Davis, his second touchdown reception. It was a strike. It was a bullet right on the money. 80-yard drive. The tray had outputted everybody in the secondary. In fact, he was waiting for the ball to arrive. <laughs> 319 is right and tries to attack on the extra point. The kick is up, straight ahead kicker, and it is good. And it's 30 to 17. Did we see an onside kick? I was about to ask you, did we get an onside kick here or what? There he is, the man who just threw the touchdown. Ronald York, Jr., Manning, South Carolina. Perfect strike to Carl Davis for Davis. Fourth reception of the year, second touchdown. Will you ask him here, they're going to do an onside kick, or will you tell him this? I'm a, Do we okay, see it? I'm going to turn to the prophet. Okay. Are they going to onside kick Liam? You can BET on that homeboy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can bet on it. Flavor. <laughs> flavor, flavor. I like that. 3.19, <laughs> the time remaining. Who's that we had in the booth with us uh, two years ago at the Circle City? Uh, Flavor Flaves and LJ Cool J? LL Cool J? Yeah, that's uh, Public Enemy. Yes. Yeah. Is that right? We also had Lips up there with us. Oh, man. Jackson. Uh, Jackson, uh, yeah. That was a uh, big fella. Uh, Biz Marquis. Biz Marquis, yes. Yeah. Hit his lips all on my shoulder, man. Come on, Biz, let me do the game. Boy, you guys are hard on him. Hey. <laughs> We hold on everybody. I remember one year down in South Carolina State, Charlie knocked the guy who had no legs out of his seat. <laughs> Charlie wouldn't do nothing. There it is. Didn't uh -oh. cover. Didn't cover. Florida and can pick it up. What are they waiting for? Goes out of bounds. Now they're going to get the ball right there. <laughs> There's the last drive, That's five it. plays, 80 yards. They use a minute and 40 to get down the field and score. 32-yard touchdown pass. The no, prof, the maybe they'll kick, called it. Maybe they'll kick it over. Liam called it. <laughs> you could BET on that home. But everybody the stadium knew it too, though. Yeah, yeah that was easy profit. That was easy, that was easy prophetic call. <laughs> Hill explaining the options to Mr. Schofield, no relation to offensive coordinator Schofield. Same spelling, but different enunciation. Illegal procedure is called against South Carolina State. Of course, Florida A&M declines it right and didn't get it five yards. Procedure, a free kick out of bounds. The receiving team declines the penalty and takes the ball to the out-of-bounds spot. First and ten. Hmm. At the 34-yard line of Florida a &M. South Carolina State gets the ball. I the 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 3:19. The time remaining. Ezel back in the lineup. Back in the lineup? Yes, he is. He sure is. The soul back in the lineup. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe don't take a chance to turn the football over. No, Ken believes in killing us. Uh, not with a sledgehammer. <laughs> he still has a sledgehammer out there. <laughs> Rattlers fourth in the conference and rushing offense. Came into the game averaging just under 200 yards per game rushing. 226 passing. 424 total offense. Second and ten. Back to pass, Ezel steps up, throws, has a man wide open at the five. Touchdown, Florida and m And on the reception, David Lucas, a reserve wide receiver. Ezel, 34 yards. 37-yard pass. 
That's an insult to injury. That's killing the net <laughs> with a sledgehammer. But they got they got a little too close. They scored seven points not of long ago. Of course, this is a homecoming. It is homecoming. And this comes with 2.40 left. Bertuno trying for his 12th point. Nope. 13th point. And count it. And it is good. And it's good. 37 to 17. The lead is 20 once again. 37. South Carolina State. I think what Kim was doing there, he wanted his young guys to play a little more, and the fact that South Carolina State scored seven points last time, he didn't feel comfortable. He's he's there, steps, steps up, up. Dude, does a great job of stepping perfect, up and just perfect. even a great pass. DB that was covering the receiver fell down and left a wide open receiver who pounded in the end zone for the six. The fourth quarter of today's game brought to you by Kentucky Fried Chicken. Nobody's cooking like today's KFC. <laughs> Two minutes 40 remaining. Ezell, 13 of 25, 237 yards, a pair of touchdowns, and breaking a couple records en route today. Career records, and he's just a junior. And that last strike, 34 yards to Lucas. 37-17, our score. Florida a &M, long kickoff by Bertuno. Carl Davis, who scored a touchdown the last time South Carolina State had the ball on the return across the 30 to the 33-yard line. yards on the return by Mr. Davis. One of the leading return men, ranked seventh in the conference in kickoff return. Last year led the conference with a 26.7 yard average. In fact, had a 94 yard kickoff return against North Carolina a &T. First and 10 at the 33. York buying time, throws. Interference. Should have been interference. They call nothing. Should have been interference. Incidental right. contact, I guess. Yeah, it Mack. should have been interference. Jeffrey Mack was the intended receiver. No flag. They wanted it. They should have got six it. remaining. They should have Toyota that when they wanted. They should have <laughs> got it. Here it is. Oh yes. Clearly. Oh, without a doubt. That was Antoine Bennett on the defense, and of course there's Jeffrey Mack pleading his case to no avail. I think they got that same Second flight you all have, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but the clock stopped on the incompletion. Here's a intercepted. Florida A&M picks off its fourth interception hey, of the year. He throws it in the stands. Craig Hall. <laughs> his third interception <laughs> of the year. That'll cost him. He don't care. There's a young man down in the crowd displaying a sign that says, Not today, South Carolina State. Fourth interception by... South Carolina State, thrown today. Ronald York came into the game with only two interceptions. He has six. I hope we can see the, the continuation of this play after he makes a fine interception, gets it at his highest point, good vertical leap. And after he's tackled, he throws the ball into the stand. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike like conduct. That's what he's calling. It'll be first and 25. <laughs> so they will start at their own 45-yard, uh, make it, no. Nope. They'll start at their own 30 after the 15-yard penalty for the unsportsmanlike. 218. The unsportsmanlike, let me tell you, was the was the young man throwing the ball into the stands. He stopped play. The referees have to get a new fresh ball, so they penalized him a personal foul for it. Sam U is intercepted for Hill. I should say turnip seed. Carroll has two, and then that last one. Picked off by Hall. New quarterback in the game. And the running back is running like he's possessed. <laughs> Look at him. Is he fired up? Is he? That's Mitchell. That's what you got to do. You got to get the kids in the ball game. Give them an opportunity to get fired up like that. Rodney Mitchell. 
Rodney, make a practice good on doing weekdays. Junior out of Killian High in Miami, getting a chance to, to do a little strutting before the homecoming crowd with a minute 52 left. And the clock continuing to run. And this is another quarterback, Keith Brown, what he has done. That completion for minus six yards as we get a legal procedure. Now that shows you how a game can be turned. You know, you talked about the previous play. There was no interference call, and then they come right back, and on the next play, they throw an interception. So it happens. Those things happen. Yes. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense. Willie Jeffries. Team started out on the front end of a 3-0 score. Things not going well as of late. They will fall to 4-3 and three overall, 2-2 two and two in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. So while Florida a &M will increase this record to 4-3, and three, they go over 500, and they remain unbeaten in conference play as their quest for the title. They started out slow. They were 1-3 after their first four games. But Ken had a lot of heat on him early on in the season. Defense, five-yard penalty. Second. Minute 23 left. He have them rolling now, though. Yeah, winning homecoming helped to uh, sustain that uh, likelihood of having a job next year. <laughs> Who's helping? Oh, he's going to have a job. <laughs> oh, fumble. And let's see who comes up with it. South Carolina, South Carolina State, State has it. Can't advance it. They're blowing the whistle. So that's why Coach Riley put his first team back in the last time when they closed the gap to 10 points. South Carolina take over on the fumble. Here it is. Under a minute to go, 57 seconds. Young kids got to know they'll be stripping the ball. They need the ball, so you got to cover that ball up, especially when you're running in traffic. Just like buckling up when you're on the expressway. Ronald York, the quarterback of record for the Bulldogs today. First and 10 at the 42-yard line of Florida a and He goes to the air. He looks, throws, has Mendenhall incomplete. Carroll almost gets his third one for the afternoon. Back to pass is York again, complete. This is Todd Houston on the reception. With 40 seconds to go in the clock running. It'll bring up a third down and about five. I'd like to thank everybody who made our job very easy up here in the booth. Of course, the sports information directors from both schools, the athletic staff from both institutions. Yeah, special Dr. Reed for providing us that barbecue ribs at <laughs> halftime. Incomplete. Todd Houston, the intended receiver. 14 seconds remaining. Another capacity crowd, a great crowd for homecoming here in Tallahassee today. Boxing tonight at 9 p.m. from Atlantic City right here on BET. Tony Tubbs will be in action. You don't want to miss it. Incomplete with Turn it eight over, get seconds, on down. seven seconds to go. And Florida and m gets the ball back once again. Liam, I bring the hot dog and um, sold it next week. For next week? Yeah. Okay, baby. I love you anyway, man. Okay. <laughs> well, let me just say this in defense. You never got a chance to play against Doug, did you? No, no I didn't. Wait, hold, hold it, child. 
I'm just what what you five saying, years older than Doug. That's why I'm saying Doug. He's way older than I am. <laughs> he didn't get a chance to pick off any of your passes, no. did he? But let me say, let me say this. But you would have, wouldn't you? I'd have, been go, I'd have been going for it. But let me say this in, in, in a test with the grandma. The many victories that Eddie has, <laughs> four of my help contribute to. I never beat Grandma. I never beat Grandma. Is that right? Never beat Grandma, man. That's going to be it. The final score from Tallahassee, 37 17. Florida and M wins homecoming 1990, beating the Rattlers of Florida and M. And we'll be back to wrap things up in just a moment. <laughs> Thank you.